Accra in the United States, a port city where historically one would engage in trade. What happens is have any running game established or Chris Wilson catching the ball down the middle of the field. And there's Walt Harris now in his seventh season as the head coach of Pittsburgh really has revived this program, which was uh, very dormant to say the least, taking his team to its fourth straight bowl game. They won their last two bowl games, including the Insight Bowl last year against Iowa State. Al Groh is a Virginia graduate. He is now in his third season here. Graduated in Virginia in 1967. Has extensive NFL experience as an assistant coach under the Bill Parcells coaching tree. And there are a lot of uh, branches off of that tree in football, both in the NFL and in college. And Al is thrilled to have this job at Virginia. Virginia won the toss and will receive. Cavaliers going 7-5 and five on the season, 4-4 four and four in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Alvin Thierman and Marcus Wheat are back to receive the kick. And they decidedly control Virginia crowd. They've sold upwards of 40,000 tickets to Virginia fans in the 75,000 seat stadium. And we are underway as Wheat gets the kickoff and takes it back just past the 26 yard line and that is where Virginia will take over. Start with their quarterback Matt Sharp, last year's ACC player of the year, hurt his shoulder on the first series of this season. Pittsburgh defensive coordinator Paul Rhodes says he's the best quarterback he's seen his face this year. And there's two full games in part to a couple of others because of that. coming up here on the, on the going for the sack here they come from the outside bam nobody picked him up beat the block of Wally Lunny that's the one thing if you want to be a successful back you got to be able to pick up with Horn the junior from Franklin Pennsylvania Lundy nothing doing as you see him tackled around our red line we have a red line 
today that shows you the line of scrimmage, and of course the yellow line is our first down line, uh, 10 yards down the field. Well, that's one thing where Pittsburgh, Cam, as you mentioned, has been struggling against the run early. The now Grove came out to loosen up by throwing the first three down. Then they tried to run the football on third down there and have no shot. Pittsburgh's going to be challenged today on the ground. So far, they've answered that challenge. And Tom Hagen in for his first punt. You mentioned the bad run defense. They were 88 in the entire country out of 117 1A schools in rush defense, giving up 184 yards a game. Boy, Hagen just gets it underway. William Ferguson collects it at 24 and is knocked down a few yards later. Larry Fitzgerald, we will get our first look at him for Pittsburgh. Panthers have the ball, but we come back to Sharks. Turn it over to Pittsburgh as one of the uh, UVA fans on hand. Pittsburgh offense, that's Rod Rutherford, unanimous choice in the first team all Big East squad, 10th in the country in total offense, and Larry Fitzgerald is split wide to the left, but they hand it off to Brandon Myrie, and he is swarmed under by a host of Cavaliers, but he still picked up three yards. I can tell you about the only thing Larry Fitzgerald did not win this season. Brandon Myrie, who got the ball there, hopes for a strong finish to his career. Stress fracture in the Blake sidelined him for seven games early in the season. A much maligned Pittsburgh offensive line out to redeem itself today. Junior tackle Rob Petiti has been struggling with ankle injuries all season. And there is Larry Fitzgerald. Keep an eye on how many times they look his way today. Should be often. UVA defense getting back on time, and they're going right back to Myrie. And Brandon stopped about a yard or so short of the first down. Cavaliers use a 3-4 defense under Al Groh. It's 6'7", Charlotte native Chris Canty. Man's one of the end spots. He leads all defensive linemen in the ACC and tackles. Daryl Blackstock's numbers down from a spectacular freshman season. Al Groh says he's become a more complete player. He has six back. Armando Muffin Curry, a co-captain, only 5'8", always around the football. Let's see how he matches up against Larry Fitzgerald, who's going to be calling. Third and two, Pittsburgh. They have not yet thrown the football. And they still walk. Three straight times to Myrie, picks up the first down, and a whole lot more. Gets about 10 yards, and Myrie, just pure power. That's a great job of patience and vision by Myrie. You're going to watch here as Blackstock will try to come underneath the block. Myrie just sidesteps and is able to go ahead and go patience and hit the hole for the first down. Nice burst from the hole, too. From Warren Brandon, let's go down Mike Leeson. Mike. Well, Pam, you mentioned his stress fracture. Of course, I mentioned 161 yards he had against Virginia Tech. He cracked the century mark in three of the last four games last year, 113 in the bowl game. He said he's healthy. He told me yesterday he made sure Walt Harris was in, within the earshot. He'd like to have 25 or 30 carries today. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? He's off to a good start. First three. As that first pass is completed to Larry Fitzgerald as he picks up five on that catch, his first catch of the day. Well, what they did, they ran a little option route or a read route for Fitzgerald, recognizing that it was zone. He's going to come off the ball, and he'll just sit it down. He, he sees a smart guy at the zone, so he's just going to sit right in between the defenders and Kai Parham right there. The freshman linebacker's got to go ahead and hug him up. If he sees him sit down, go ahead and jump him. Jump him underneath on that little read route. Fitzgerald's 88 catch of the season. Keeping it on the ground. As the fullback, Mustafa Polite, gets his first carry and picks up two. Well, Polite's been doing a good job of holding up the holes for Brandon Myrie. So, Walt Harrison, I'll give you a little love. Here's the ball. It's a little fullback belly play you don't see very often. But it's third and two, and it's a very makeable third down for Pitt with the run pass option. And the rushing offense has been abysmal the last two games, a grand total of 36 yards. It's a very disappointing loss to Miami. Had they won, they would be Big East champions in the BCS game. Right there's Larry Fitzgerald lined up in the backfield. Third and three. He's against Blackstock, the linebacker, and he beats them for the first down. But they got the matchup they wanted. Well, that's why I drew it right there, because by lining him up in the backfield, you take a defensive back out of the equation as far as covering him. You're putting a linebacker on possibly the best wide receiver in 25 years, and what he's going to do is run a seam route and bend it inside. So he gets inside the linebacker, 
and in between the safeties. And Rutherford's just waiting for him. Now, what Blackstock has to do, first of all, you never look back for the football. And second of all, you've got to jam the big fella. You can't let him run free. He'll make a highlight film out of you. And that's what Al Gross told us in the meeting yesterday. You can't let him get off the uh, line of scrimmage cleanly for your coach. Myree, nice little sidestep. And Brandon Myree off to a terrific start as he gets it inside the 20-yard line. Jermaine Hardy coming up to make the stop. You know, with this is this is going to be dangerous for Virginia if, as Mike Gleason pointed out in the pregame, if they're able to run the football, it opens up so many passing lanes for Rutherford and Larry Fitzgerald's out there working against zone. Forget about it. He's too big. He just sits down in the middle and they just play pitch and catch. It's all due set up to the running game. Second and two coming up. That was an eight-yard carry for Myrie. Rutherford hands it to Polite, the fullback, and you hear the fans here yelling, Lou, shortened for Lusaka, and Lou picks up a first down. And right now, they're just beating him up. I mean, uh, anytime you start a football game, it's like a, a fight. And who's going to throw the first punch? And right now, Pitt's throwing the first punch, and Virginia's yet to respond. I mean, they're taking right hook, right hook straight. They've got to respond and start getting off block. And offensive line mentioned uh, there had been some criticism, especially during the latter part of the season, for that all-senior offensive front. Simonitis is a sophomore, everybody else is senior, and so far they've responded in this game. First down on the ninth play of this drive. Myrie in motion. Rutherford, all the time in the world, jumps underneath in a one-handed grab. A terrific grab by Polite, the fullback. It almost looked like Larry Fitzgerald there for yeah, a second. Yeah, he did. He's, he's watching Larry get lessons, and I'm watching Larry on that play. He's got three guys on him. This is a good job. First of all, protection, and Rutherford not panicking. The play goes up with one hand. It's a great job. Here's what Al Gross talking about, getting hits on receivers. You have three guys. you got black stock in them, and uh, that's a nice little shot there. <laughs> you like that one? Yeah. 24 catches a year for flight as they pitch it back to Myrie. And Brandon keeping his feet going. Picks up about six more yards. Very impressive drive here for Pittsburgh. And Myrie, a transfer from Alabama. And because of the injuries, he's made only 13 starts in his five-year career. But might have an NFL future ahead of him. Good at uh, catching the ball out of the backfield. He's a smart kid already in grad school as well. Anytime you can, you can be a dual threat as a running back or a fullback, that's the team polite as far as doing all three phases as well, running, passing, and blocking. NFL guys will look at that. Yeah. And there are some NFL guys here today. We've seen some scouts as the Panthers are just a smidge short of the first down. I'm talking to one of them and saying we've got guys like Matt Schaub and, and Larry Fitzgerald at a football game. It's like a GM or scout convention because they all want to lay eyes on a guy. They just don't want to see him out the film. They want to lay eyes on him and watch him play in person. Third and inches now. You see Pittsburgh inside the 20. Larry Fitzgerald, half of his touchdown catches have been in the red zone. you got a big quarterback, Sam, 6'3", 225, Rod Rutherford. I've picked the football. Pittsburgh has converted both of the third down chances on this drive. Right there's the gap to hit it in. Rutherford's listening to you. He's should have the first down. Mm -hmm. Nestled over his big guys in front. Uh, yeah, first of all, it's a great job by Pittsburgh's offensive line. And their pad level is lower than Virginia's pad level. If you're a defensive lineman and you're trying to play against these guys, you cannot play tall. You've got to play skinny. See, the guys are too tall. Look at the pad level. And look at the blue helmets are getting driven back. And the gold helmets are pushing them back. Because their pad level was lower than the defensive line's pad level. Easy first down pickup for Rod Rutherford. Again, a strong kid and good athlete. Rod Petiti, the right the, uh, left tackle, came in late and uh, helped him get that extra inch or two. Good job by him. Over the top, Polite. Trying to go in, but he has stopped about a half, half yard short of the goal line. And Ty Parham coming over the top of his linebacker spot. And that's what you have to do. As a linebacker, you got one guy that the play is running to. He's got to go low, make a pile, then the backside inside linebacker in the 34 defense has got to be the topper. You got to be able to top it off. And you got to time that jump. And right there, Ty Parham did a good job of, uh, of being the topper. And they had some great young linebackers. Parham is a freshman. Trying it again. Rutherford hanging on to it. 
And he is marked again just short of the end zone. Again, you have Kai Parham coming over the top. Just disrupting Rod Rutherford just enough. And forcing Rod to cut it back into the pursuit of the Virginia defense. They tried to run the little dive option. There's the dive. There's the option. There's Parham getting a little, getting a little head flap in there. You got guys down there on the defensive line not quitting and fighting. Al Grove calls Kai Parham a hammer. And he's shown it in the last couple of plays. Oh, it's Robinson, number 98, making a tap from, from his back on his bottom. He's we're in. Third and goal. Oh, he's not getting in again. A smackdown on Polite. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's the topper. Who's going to be the topper? And now what's happening is Virginia's defensive line tad level lower than the gold helmet. And so they're winning the battle up front. Watch right here. Look at the pad level. See, they're down. They're making a foul. Kai Parham come over the top and deliver it. That's a, a special delivery. That's a two-day delivery. Bam! <laughs> see it again. Come over. See what I mean by the topper? Find the team that comes in. And then wraps his arms. He doesn't belly bump him. He wraps his arms. Makes a play. It's for going for it on fourth down. Fourth and goal. And nothing doing. A terrific goal line stand by this Virginia defense as my ring was denied. Uh, and, 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 and the pulling guard for Pittsburgh. Dan LaCarte misses his block. We'll take a look at it again, and, and the Virginia defender does a good job of a swim move. He puts a swim move. Here's the pulling guard. He throws a strike. And there's Brock, a hundred, Kenny, right. Swim move. Brock with a hit. It's all about commitment. You gotta be there for him, buddy. Golf, physics, chess. Uh, I gotta go. With Verizon Wireless, you won't miss sharing a single moment this holiday season. Guess what Dad did with the lights? Give your family the gift of unlimited family calling anytime minutes. That's right, anytime minutes on the America's Choice Family Share Plan from Verizon Wireless, the company that gives you the nation's most reliable wireless network with fewer drop calls. Plus, hurry and buy one LG phone for $19.99 and get up to three free. Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. Can you hear me now? Good. What were we thinking about when we gave the Kia Sedona a powerful standard engine? What were we thinking about when we gave it such a great warranty and priced it thousands less than our competitors? What were we thinking about when we designed it to get the government's highest safety rating? What were we thinking? We were thinking about Scotty, Nanny, Poppy, Uncle Larry, Derek, Eric, Dad, and Mr. Mothead. The always family-friendly Kia Sedona. Get remaining 2003 Sedonas for $17,615 after $3,000 cash back. Hurry, offer ends soon. You're gonna die today. You're not gonna kill me. A secret uncovered. I have to prevent something terrible from happening. A mission he must complete. Take him. This is a matter of national security. Ben Affleck, Aaron Eckhart, Uma Thurman, from director John Woo. Paycheck, thirty-two thirteen. Now playing in theaters everywhere. Pittsburgh had the ball first and goal from the one and couldn't get in. Here's the fourth down play. Yeah, look at the guard sitting back on his heels. That tells me he's going to pull. Watch him pull right here. Now he's going to throw a no-hitter on Ahmed Brooks, who does a nice little swim move and gets down and gets his legs in the pursuit of Virginia defense. Outstanding. Holding up that fourth down. Nice play. Nice defense. Boy, Ahmad Brooks, another one of those freshman inside linebackers. That pass is completed to Ryan Sawyer. Let's take him out of Reese Davis and Mark May, guys. All right, Pam, we're enjoying it as Capital One Bowl Week rolls on. Offense, 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 bowl scoring records going down, Mark. And you got to love it. Teams are roughly averaging 37 points a game offensively. This has got to be giving Chris Spielman hives out there. Too many points out there, Chris. How about that? Five of the eight winners so far have scored at least 49. We'll show you the shootout and the insight in just a little while, Pam. 
I'm, uh, I'm putting the Calamine lotion on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a heck of a game last night in the inside bowl. Those guys will show you later. Ottawa Anderson going up, making a heck of a catch. Awesome. Nice job of playing man-to-man -man in that job. That's the, the dollars to the understanding and recognize man-to-man. -man. They run to the skinny post. That's the difference in the dig. This is kind of on a 45-degree angle. He's pushing up the field. And there's the skinny post. He beats him inside. Goes up and catches the ball with his hands at the highest point. Fundamental, fundamental, fundamental. 19 yards in the first down. Anderson, about 75% of his catches this year have been for first downs, including that one. That was that shot they set. That's a little reverse as Marcus Hagan comes around. And Hagan, he's sort of the flash guy for Virginia, plays the quarterback for him. And he comes around the end and picks up another first down. Oh, you got a few close to that that are back up to find a way to get them the football right there. Hagan's coming on to reverse. It's a good job. A big help. Brown getting a block. 6'6", 333 pounds. Getting one guy. Then his big body shields off three guys. Hagan has thrown the ball. He's thrown the ball this year. Run it. Caught it. And also been a punt returner for this Virginia team. That was a 12-yard gain. Another first down for Virginia. It's amazing what a goal line stand will do for a momentum and excitement. Pump everybody up. Schaub over the middle. He's Miller. He's pounded his tight end. His first catch of the day is for a touchdown. You got no safety help. You got a defensive back on a tight end. You got to be able to match up. But Heath Miller's going to turn him around. He's going to run up the field, and he's going to fake like he's going outside. He bends it back to the middle of the field again. Matt Schaub not making Heath Miller work to catch the ball. A nice little breakaway speed for the big fella. Miller, what a talent. Sophomore, 6'5", 255. That's a new career-long catch for him. A 52-yard touchdown. The extra point is added. And Heath Miller, that was his 100th career catch. And it's a big one as Virginia takes the lead. Kevin Frazier. Join me as I count down the ESPN 100. Everyone and everything that mattered most in sports in 2003. I'm innocent. ESPN 100, Monday at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Jeff Smoker and the Spartans air it out against the tough black shirt defense of Nebraska. The MasterCard Alamo Bowl. Michigan State, Nebraska. Monday at 9 Eastern. It's all part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN. Check out the 100% pure broadband power of Comcast high-speed internet. Speed changes everything. Call now for this great offer. Get heavy-duty storage in your garage, workshop, or office with Gorilla Rack from Menard. This 16-foot-wide pre-shelf unit is just $259, plus save an extra 10% when you use your big card. If you didn't get one for Christmas, save big on a Roto-Zip Spiral Saw, only $49.99, and all accessories are 20% off. Plus, save an extra 10% on everything, even sale prices, with your Menard big card. Save big money at Menard. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2003 Continental Tire Bowl. Brought to you by Continental Tire North America. They're not just tires, they're Continental Tire. Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. And by City Identity Theft Solutions. Free help in getting your life back. That's using your card wisely. Keith Miller, second in the entire country for catches for a tight end. His first catch today, a huge one, a 52-yarder, as Virginia has taken a 7-0 lead over Pittsburgh. And he ran what they call a corner post drop. Ran down the field, faked like he was going in the corner end zone, turned it into the post, turned the defense back around. Result, 7. After that goal line stand, they got that 97-yard drive. As William Tutu Ferguson 
gets the kick off and he is shot down around his 26 yard line. So Heath Miller continuing on his terrific season, earning the most prolific tight end in Virginia history. We'll be back with more in Charlotte. Where does reality end and pure vision begin? A Pioneer Plasma display can deliver more than one billion colors, taking high-definition television to a whole new level. Pure vision. Only from Pioneer. What were we thinking about when we gave the Kia Sedona a powerful standard engine? What were we thinking about when we gave it such a great warranty and priced it thousands less than our competitors? What were we thinking about when we designed it to get the government's highest safety rating? What were we thinking? We were thinking about Scotty, Nanny, Poppy, Uncle Larry, Derek, Eric, Dad, and Mr. Mothead. The always family-friendly Kia Sedona. Get remaining 2003 Sedonas from $17,615 after $3,000 cash back. Hurry, offer ends soon. He likes corned beef sandwiches. He also likes sauerkraut on his hash browns. He's a very unique and dynamic character. Take my advice, he'd be great for the show. Welcome to the second Continental Tire Bowl here in Charlotte, North Carolina, the North American home of Continental Tire. Continental Tire is a global leader in tire performance and technology. Our products, like the Conti Sport Contact 2, our original equipment on many of the world's top manufacturers of cars and trucks. Continental Tire is proud to be the title sponsor of the Continental Tire Bowl. We thank our thousands of customers and employees for their support. Enjoy this great game between the University of Pittsburgh and the University of Virginia. This is indeed the second annual Continental Tire Bowl, and it's really given us a terrific matchup today in Pittsburgh and Virginia. UVA with the early 7 to nothing lead on Heath Miller's touchdown catch. Watch for a little play action. Dumps it underneath to Brandon Myrie. And his tail back, tack it down around the 32, we send you back to Reese. All right, Pam, as promised, the inside bowl, Virginia Tech and Cal last night. D'Angelo Hallmark announced after the game he's headed to the NFL. This is a great way to go out. Look at him point to his boxers. You get him, you get him, you get him, and I'll take it all the way down into the end zone. This cap to come back to make it 49 all, but Tyler Fredrickson, his last kick at Cal, gives the Bears a bowl victory. What a game that was. Great win again for Jeff Texter, the fighting Jeff Texter. Gave us like to call Cal. Great game. Myrie gets it. Nice cutback for Brandon, and he picks up the first down. Out past the 40-yard line. A lot more college football headed your way. Capital One Bowl week. Jeff Smoker, a terrific story for Michigan State, leading the Spartans Monday night against... Nebraska and the MasterCard Alamo Bowl, 9 Eastern on ESPN, all part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and ESPN2. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. That's a fighting Bo Pelini, <laughs> temporarily, until a decision right. made by so Steve Nebraska, Beaton. yeah, it's uh, been sort of interesting. Some of the players a little restless about not being uh, kept informed as to what's going on at Nebraska. First down throw for Rutherford, and he completes it for yet another first down to Prince L. Brockenbro, the senior from Richmond, Virginia. Nice job by Rod Rutherford of not trying to force the ball to Fitzgerald. Hitting the receiver that's open. Brockenbro does a great job again, sitting in recognized the zone and sitting in between the men in the zone coverages. Outstanding route running. Walt Harris, though. Walt Harris is a guy that understands the passing game understands the weaknesses of the zone and attacks the zone. Rutherford perfect so far, and Harris, before he was here, was, you know, offensive assistant at Ohio State. He's done a perfect job at Pittsburgh. Rutherford trying to run that option. Oh, a bad pitch! My really can't handle it cleanly. But, boy, he was fortunate to fall onto it. And 
and he was enveloped by a couple of Cavalier defenders. That's a loss of three. Yeah, bad pitch now. Rod's running to his right. Now, he throws with his left. Let's take a look at the pitch. So he's got to pitch the ball with his right hand. He kind of flicks it out there. He just throws it out there. Myrie did a good job of hustling, getting on the loose football. But I don't think they'll be running to the opposite yeah. to the right. I want to think that about that. Line. Yeah. Tony Franklin was, was there along with Darrell Blackstock. Myrie fortunately fell on a pitch break. Polite, the fullback, he's going to run it. He gets it just past the original line of scrimmage. And it's just joining us, you missed a few weeks ago, line stand. Yeah. There's a freshman little linebacker. So first you have Kai Parham coming up. Then Kai getting a head slap. The Robinson's under his belly making a tackle. Then Kai coming over the top, being the topper. Then Amos Rook with a swim move, getting his head inside in the pursuit of the Cavalier defense. Kept him out of the end zone. Great goal line defense. Great inside linebacker play for Al Groves. 34 defense. Not common in college football. Could make a little comeback in the throws. Harry Brook, the Mod Jack, goes to the Redskins. And they have first and goal from the one and couldn't get it in. The first, first third and long situation. This is the third and nine. Time for Rutherford. And Larry Fitzgerald catches it with three or four blue jerseys around him. Wow. Wow is right. A 19 yard gain for Larry. And, and, uh, uh, and obviously a wow for Larry, but a bigger wow for Rod Rutherford. Or sitting in the pocket and delivering the fastball strike. Here's Fitzgerald coming, coming to the football, coming to the football. Again, beating the zone coverage in the strong hand. That's what you love to see is a wide receiver in the strong hand taken away from Hardy, the defensive back for Virginia. See, look at the strong hand. Hardy has no shot. He grabs his right hand, but Larry just shifts the ball to his left hand. Fitzgerald is reminding a lot of people of someone like a Randy Moss, who can just take the ball away from people. Pittsburgh down 7 to nothing as we head to the second quarter. Big Monday. Return January 5th on ESPN. What were we thinking about when we gave the Kia Sedona a powerful standard engine? What were we thinking about when we gave it such a great warranty and priced it thousands less than our competitors? What were we thinking about when we designed it to get the government's high safety rating? What were we thinking? We were thinking about Scotty, Nanny, Poppy, Uncle Larry, Derek, Eric, Dad, and Mr. Mockhead. The always family-friendly Kia Sedona. Get remaining 2003 Sedonas from 17,615 after 3,000 cash back. Hurry, offer ends soon. Southwest Airlines internet specials for just $39 to $99 when you purchase by January 19th, only at Southwest.com. You are now free to move about the country. To protect a secret, they erased his memory. Now, 19 clues will show him how to collect on the life he lost. Paycheck, rated PG-13, now playing in theaters everywhere. For when you need it most, our longest lasting Energizer Max ever. After that, I told myself, Do you have the bunny inside? I am not dating girls named after Satan. Second quarter about to get underway. Virginia, a 52 yard touchdown pass from Matt Schaub to Heath Miller has given them a 7 0 lead, but Maude Brooks and his uh, Cavalier defense coming up big on a goal line stand. Larry Fitzgerald and his team down 7 zip. Three catches for 44 yards. Rutherford will pump fake and has to take off. Good coverage by the Cavalier defense, but Rutherford showing his talent. Picks up the first down as we head down to Mike Leeson. 
Ben and Chris, with all the records that uh, Fitzgerald set this year and all the talk about whether or not he's going to the NFL next season, he said one record he would like to see broken here today. Dan Marino had 37 touchdown passes in one season. Right now, Rod Rutherford has 35. If he had his way, he would love to see Rod Rutherford get two or three touchdowns here this afternoon to tie or break Dan Marino's record of 37. Dan Marino did that 37 back in 1981, Mike, and that just shows you too, right? So still thinking about his guy, Rutherford, who is really off to a terrific start. He had a slow finish to his regular season, playing well here. There's a touchdown pass. 13-yard strike to Prince L. Brock and Bro. Again, if they're going to focus all their attention on Larry Fitzgerald, and other guys have to step up and make plays. First of all, Rod Rutherford's right on target, and here's Brockenberg's going to come right in there. Find again the middle of the zone, and what happened was DeMont Britt jumped the underneath guy, opened up a throwing lane for Brockenberg. He's got to stay back at the goal line, make a throw over him. If the ball's thrown in front of you, go catch it. But Brockenberg does a good job of shielding the defender, catching the ball, keeping the defender between himself and, and the ball. Outstanding effort, great route, great throw. Brockenberg with his fourth touchdown catch of his season and career. Extra point by David Abdul is good. And Pittsburgh has tied this game up at seven apiece. Rod Rutherford off to a spectacular start. Panthers have tied up the cast. What good is a new DVD player? If you don't have the best DVD of the year. Drop the knife. I can't. Excellent. Own it today. This New Year, lose weight and save money. With Net Zero High Speed, you can surf the web up to five times faster than standard dial-up. Why wait for expensive DSL or cable? Get Net Zero High Speed now for just $14.95 a month at netzero.com. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. surfing a giant tsunami in shark-infested waters while wearing an embarrassingly skimpy bathing suit competition. This makes it so easy. Wow. Cast your vote for the National Mascot of the Year at CapitalOneBowl.com. Tune in to Capital One Bowl with Steve Uwe. Until Brockenbro has caught a touchdown pass from Rod Rutherford to tie up this Continental Empire Bowl game at seven apiece. As we take a look at the touchdown pass, we ask the athletic trivia question, who holds the Pittsburgh record for most touchdown passes thrown in a bowl game? Rod Rutherford has one so far today, and think it over, we will have the answer coming up later in the game. Rutherford off to a spectacular start, seven for seven, 80 yards, and touchdown. Not bad for a guy who threw seven picks in the last three regular season games. Alvin Pierman, nice team as he gets it up to the 30-yard line for the Cavaliers. Matt Schaub about to lead his Virginia offense back onto the field. As we take a look at the quarterback comparison, Schaub not shabby, but Rutherford's been perfect. Well, both guys are shine. Playing like seniors, guys that want to go out winner. Both of them have been on target and on time delivering the football, which is vital to the success of the quarterback that can deliver the ball on time. And Schaub threw over 70% of his passes during the season. Spectacular. Pierman, the guy who ran back the kickoff, now gets the carry. And Alvin Pierman, who is from Charlotte, gives his hometown folks something to cheer about. Pierman missed. 
missed this game last year because of an injury. Coming back strong today. Yeah, first of all, it's a great job of blocking. Watch Cameron's going to take two steps inside. To me, as a linebacker, that tells me draw. Here's H.B. Blaze is getting out playing man-to-man. -man. There's a great block on Lewis Moore. Not a devastating block, but a good enough block to get in the way. And Alvin Pittman with a great cut. It's off to the races. But when the running back is steps inside, that's draw. Fourth step by the lineman, running back inside, draw. That was the longest rush of the season for anybody at Virginia. It's 51 yards as Wally Lundy goes down. 51-yard game for Pierman. And remember, Pittsburgh has given up some humongous numbers on the ground this season. How about three 200-yard rushers, and if you combine Peyton and Moss from Miami, that's four games in which guys just gone crazy. Well, and and it's, uh, a lot of it's attributed to the youth, and I talked to Paul Rose, the defensive coordinator, about this. He, he took a lot of the blame for that, saying, look, he tried to do too much with young guys. The youth as far as the spring. He limited the playbook, and the guys started playing a little bit better and playing a little bit tough. Not thinking, not bring presentation. They did hold Lundy to no game that time. Shaw play action, looking for Miller as tight end again, and he gets him for a first down from the first and goal Cavalier. Miller matched up against Tez Moore. And Heath Miller, again, just a terrific talent, only a sophomore, the only Cavalier to be first team all conference. Well, he's such a weapon and a threat. He's got sure hands. He understands the game right there. He had Tez Moore. He's got about eight inches on Tez Moore. He just uses his big body. And Tez has got to get up the balance a little bit to play him. He can't give him that much room to work. They're setting ACC records for tight ends this season. Lundy stops about a yard or so short of the goal line. Malcolm Postel, one of the linebackers, coming up to make the stop. The old power roll play. Everybody in America runs it out of the eye back. And that's actually a good job by Ted Morris coming in and topping off. But Malcolm with the original hit. Good flow by linebacker. Good fill by Tate. Second goal for the Cavaliers. Lundy again, and he stopped short. A good job as Josh Lay came up, one of the corners, and laid a hit on it. Well, both defenses certainly have been vulnerable, but I love how they're responding to the challenge when they get down to the goal line. They're all coming up and making plays, getting off blocks and making hits. That's a good job of coming in underneath. And Lewis Moore coming over the top as Josh Lay. Getting his body, that's placing his body for his buddy. Nice. Now third and goal. Remember, Virginia had a goal line stand of its own. Pittsburgh trying to counter. Schaub looking for Miller, but he's well covered. And Schaub is shot down about a yard or so short of the goal line. So fourth and goal from the one coming up. First of all, it's a great job of coverage on the bootleg on Heath Miller. Watch Heath Miller. He's going to try to work right here. He leaves. But the corner does not let him go. And this is not a very good job by Heath Miller of trying to get away. He's just kind of playing pity pat with Shantae Spencer. He's got to find an open spot and sit down in it. He's leaving his boy Shabby out to try. Get open. Well, Virginia, an outstanding 13 of 14 on fourth down this year. They go for it on fourth and goal from the one. They give it off. And that is a touchdown for Wally Lundy. He scored four here last year. That's his first today. You said it, Wally Lundy, touchdown. Why? Because he put a Pittsburgh Panther defender as a backpack and carried him <laughs> into the end zone. Now, you've got to go ahead and not grab guys. You've got to deliver the blow. The defender grabbed him while he just carried him. He didn't deliver. He caught. Tenth rushing touchdown of the season as Connor Hughes kicks home the extra point. So Virginia scoring on fourth and goal from the one. And UVA, the power. It's going to be a defender. Josh Lay, don't catch. Deliver. Wally, deliver. It's all about commitment. You got to be there for it, buddy. Golf, is it? Cheers. Uh, I gotta go.
just tires. They're continental tires. over a game and a quarter as he's played in two Continental Tire Bowls. That one he punched over on a fourth and goal from the one. 51-yard run by Alvin Kierman on the first play of the drive. Most of the yardage on that drive, and UVA has a touchdown lead now over Pittsburgh. Terrell Allen gets it just a shade inside his end zone for Pittsburgh and stops short at the 15-yard line. Let's go down to Mike Leeson for more on Wally Lundy. Well, Pam, you mentioned Lundy's four touchdowns in this game last year. He's come a long way to get where he is. You see, he was only four when his dad passed away at the age of 30 from a stroke. He was eight when he lost his mother to cancer. He and his brothers were then raised by his grandmother, who had already retired to Florida. She moved back to New Jersey. Well, Wally rushed for 2,000 yards his senior year of high school. Now, listen to this. His brother, Shahid, graduated from Rutgers. Another brother, Jamal, is a UConn graduate. Another brother, Michael, is the starting tailback at Towson State. Now, pretty impressive as far as staying focused and making the right choices in life, Pam. Well, I thank Mike. That's a, a terrific testament to uh, the members of his family and obviously to Wally and his uh, his siblings. Doing great things with their lives despite tough circumstances. Brandon Myrie getting the carry there for Pittsburgh and picking up about four on first down. Let's take a look at last year. Wally Lundy, well, it was his show against West Virginia. UVA trail 10-7 at the end of one, but here come the Cavaliers. Well, Lee was a true freshman. He had 239 all-purpose yards, four touchdowns on the day, two rush, two receiving, and Virginia went on to crush West Virginia, 48 to 22. That's a Continental Tire Bowl down here. They might start naming it the Lundy Zone <laughs> instead of the End Zone. What's he get from that? You see his numbers so far today quite modest, but he does have that touchdown. And Virginia was able to convert on a goal line situation. Their defense kept Pittsburgh out earlier in the first quarter. They could not score after a first and one. First and goal from the one. Rutherford showing his speed and commands as a runner. Picks up the first down for the Panthers. Jermaine Hardy makes the stop. But that's a big game of 18 yards. Now, first glance, it looks like it's the option, but it's not. It's the quarterback sweep because watch my re right here. He's going to become a blocker. He's not looking to pitch. He's going to come up and block. He's not looking for the quarterback. That's just the quarterback sweep. That's, that's drawing him up in the dirt. That's going back to Midget League football, the old quarterback sweep. They used to call that 18. The one's the quarterback and he ate the hole you run through, so you get 18. They ran the 18 right. That's a good. great number so far for a kid who grew up not far from Heinz Field. Where the Panthers play, sharing that field with the Steelers, right up the gut, Brandon Myrie. That's a nine yard game for Brandon. Yeah, well, the UVA is not getting off block. I mean, that was a question mark coming into the game, as a question mark of Pittsburgh's offensive line. Right now, they've answered. And if you're going to play a 34 defense, you've got to be able to get off block. Or you've got to, if you're the three defensive linemen, then you've got to eat up blocks just so your linebackers can make plays. But they're not eating them up, and the linebackers aren't getting off block, so they're getting big chunks of yardage at a time here now. Pittsburgh now with 90 rushing yards in this game already. Second and two. 
keeping it on the ground. And that should be good enough for another first down for Pittsburgh. And uh, Myree gets yet another carry. And it is a first down for the Panthers. Lots more football headed your way. Saturday, the NFL's double coverage tonight kicks off at 8.30 on ESPN as MVP candidate Donovan McNabb leads the Eagles over the Redskins, who's just trying to win the NFC East. And tomorrow night, Jamal Lewis tries to break the NFL single-season rushing record. Ravens and Steelers. It all starts with NFL primetime presented by Miller Lite. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. The NFL season winds down. And the bowl season winds up. Oh, there's the blitz. They don't pick it up, and that is a sack for Raymond Mann. Came in untouched and got Rod Rutherford. Mann's fourth sack this year. Yeah, Raymond Mann does come in untouched. You know, he's a senior outside linebacker. He's right here. Look, look at his track stamp. See, that means he's not dropping. He's coming. There's a miscommunication, and that's an easy pick in there for Mann. But you can tell by his stance that he was off to the races. And to me, it looked like a missed assignment by the tight end for Pittsburgh. And the senior from Hampton, Virginia. Now second and 17 for the Panthers. Larry Fitzgerald hasn't been thrown to in a while. Rutherford stepping up in the pocket, gets it over the middle in front of Ahmad Brooks. Pinchel Brockenborough stops just short of the first down, and a late flag is in. Brockenborough and Brooks get into it a little bit. They're going to get Brooks there for, you know, you're a freshman. When you make a tackle 30 yards downfield, you don't need to be celebrating. You hear that whistle blow, you've got to have the discipline to pull off and let the guy go. You don't need to slam him after he catches the ball 18 yards. And Brockenborough right here does a good job again. There's a strike delivered. It's a good hit by Brooks. The whistle's blown, let him go. Then you get up and start doing this stuff. You don't need to do that. You're a football player, man. Don't need to be a street fighter. He threw him down, and then he, after the play, he brought him through the football. And then he punched him in the, in the helmet, man. It makes no sense. You're costing your team. You can be all the physical, and, and when in between the whistles, you can be as bad as you want to be. You can enter a tough man contest between the whistles. When that whistle blows, you got to have the discipline to stop, or you're going to hurt your football team. And especially after they get 17 yards on you. Yeah, just adding insult to injury. And you did see as Al Groh uh, argues a little bit. Brock Groh, after he was slammed down, which Brooks shouldn't have done, he flicked the ball, and that yeah. hit Brooks, and then he threw the right arm in, and there comes your flag. So 15 more yards, first down, and 10. Panthers in good field position at the 30. Rutherford retreats, and then completes it to my race. Austin Curry with the stop. And he picks up about five yards. This is what I like what Rutherford's doing. He's not trying to force the ball to Larry Fitzgerald. Virginia is occupying Larry Fitzgerald. They're having guys run to them. Two and three guys run to them. The Rod's saying, fine. I'm a senior. I know this offense. I will deliver the ball to the open player. So he's not forcing the ball. The other guys are open. And Rod's taking what the defense is giving to him. Well coached, smart quarterback play. So Rutherford continuing to play practically perfectly down second and four. Myree going over the left side of the line. And he picks up another first down for the Panthers, picking his way nicely for another first down. This is the second annual Continental Tire Bowl, playing this at Erickson Stadium on a perfect day in Charlotte, North Carolina. Virginia scoring on a Wally Lundy touchdown run. Heath Miller has caught a touchdown pass. Princel Brockengrove, a touchdown pass from Rod Rutherford. Pam Ward, Chris Gilman, and Mike Leeson join you. And Rod Rutherford is perfect. Nine for nine for 102 yards. Three of those catches by Larry Fitzgerald. He's only been thrown to three times. He's caught all three for 43 yards. And as Chris mentioned, he's been very well covered. Rutherford stepping up in the pocket, zipping it towards the end zone. And that is his first incomplete pass. Well, if you're watching the film, you want to prepare for Larry Fitzgerald, you got to get hands on him. Those guys already pushing him down right there. 
There's Muffin Curry putting it on him. Blackstock putting it on him. Curry again getting in front of him, disrupt the timing of the route. Blackstock again coming over and getting a body on him. That's how he takes Larry Fitzgerald out of the game. But the problem for Virginia is, fine, we're going to occupy two guys on him. Guess what? Pittsburgh says we've got other guys to make plays, including Rutherford. He's finding the open receiver to make the play. Ten play this drive. Short pass completed to Myrie. Brandon gets a nice block at the five, and he's into the end zone for the Panther touchdown. Pay attention because I've got about 35 things to say on this play. <laughs> Screen pass, short a set by the offensive lineman. They get no depth. Watch right here. See, they're getting a little depth. They're not moving anywhere. Then they're taking off downfield. Now watch Brandon Myrie with his patience as a running back setting blocks up. Watch Brockenbro make a block. Larry Fitzgerald down there making a block, coming in and cleaning up the pile. If you want to be a complete receiver, not only do you catch and you run routes, but you block downfield. When receivers block downfield, you get big plays. My Reese says that's a big play. I'll score a touchdown. In the Lundy zone. <laughs> David Abdul <laughs> misses the extra point. It cranked off one of the uprights. Uh, he's struggling all year. Boy. His confidence is shot. A very tough year for David Abdul. You see the hole? The hole's good. Lights it out, big hole. And bam, right off the right side. Very John Carney like. Yeah, Walt doesn't like that. That's against fundamentals. He's a fundamentalist. Let me show you the touchdown on it. This is nice. Vince Young and Cedric Benson lead the high-powered Longhorn attack against Washington State. The Pacific Life Holiday Bowl, Washington State, Texas. Tuesday at 8. It's all part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN. Hi, I'm Kevin Frazier. Join me as I count down the ESPN 100. Everyone and everything that mattered most in sports in 2003. I'm innocent. ESPN 100, Monday at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Are there really people who spend every minute thinking about TV? People who obsess over how to make the internet more fun? Is there a place where people are dedicated to finding new ways to entertain you and inspire you? You better believe it. We're Comcast, a cable company dedicated to changing the way you think about your cable company. It's the year-end giveaway at Jacobs Twin Auto Plaza. Start with 2,000 new vehicles from Buick, Pontiac, Ford, Mazda, Hyundai, and more. Add an $8,000 discount, a $6,000 rebate, 0% financing, and no payments till March, and you will think they're giving every new vehicle away. But when the ball drops Wednesday night, the year-end giveaway ends at Jacobs Twin Auto Plaza on Grand at Oak Park Avenue in Chicago. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2003 Continental Tire Bowl. Brought to you by City Identity Theft Solutions. Free help in getting your life back. That's using your card wisely. Athlax, ask about it at work. And Bowflex, the choice of professionals. Visit Bowflex on the web at bowflexendzone.com. Rod Rutherford has tied Dan Marino for the most touchdown passes in a season. 37 of them. Did that with his throw to Brandon Myrie. Extra point no good, so 14-13 Virginia. Marcus Weeks takes it about a yard deep in the end zone. And Weeks, with some daylight on the right side, is tackled down at the 37-yard line. Mike Gleason now with more on David Abdul's tough year. Well, Pam, uh, Chris mentioned he's been struggling all year, and uh, he was considered one of the best freshman kickers in the country last year. Last April, his longtime girlfriend gave birth to his son. In May, he saw his apartment go up in flames, and then in June, he watched his best friend, Billy Gaines, the former wide receiver, fall to his death in a tragic accident while both were crawling on a catwalk above the church sanctuary. He's the all-time leading scorer in Ohio high school history, but he's really, really struggled, as Chris said, with his consistency this year. Coming in, he was only 9 of 18 on field goal attempts. All right, and Abdul missing that extra point. You see the BG on the helmet is for Billy Gaines, who 
died this past year in a very difficult year for Abdul. He's now 48 of 50 on extra points after flanking that one. Lundy, first down carry, picks up a couple. All those life changes obviously are going to affect the performance of a player. And David Abdul is actually from my high school. And I know that he certainly has the talent. He'll get it back. He's a tough kid. He'll get it back. Abdul is from Hartville, Ohio. Only a sophomore. Of course, had to get the yeah. score again. <laughs> All-time leading scorer, right, for yeah. kickers in Ohio. So that's a very good kicker, but a very difficult year. And kicking has got to be a lot of it is a, is a mental aspect where, as far as kickers are concerned. Job under pressure. Gets away from it. Firing it long. Art Thomas was uh, double covered. That one is incomplete. Third and eight coming up for the Cavaliers. Matt Schaub did a good job. Now he's going to throw the ball. He saw double coverage. He said, fine, I'll just throw one away. Again, the senior quarterback not trying to force it in there to throw it where nobody can get it. Schaub coming in on the season with 17 touchdown passes and nine interceptions coming into this game. And he has thrown a touchdown pass, a 52-yarder to Heath Miller today. Third and eight for the Cavaliers. And a timeout is taken by Virginia. A little confusion in the huddle, and Schaub wants to be sure. So a third long coming up for Virginia. They lead this game by an extra point. You know, I dated a girl named Georgia. I had to break it off, so. Mom. It's about love, man. That's what it's For when you need it most, our longest-lasting Energizer Max ever. After that, I told myself. Do you have the bunny inside? I am not dating girls named after fish. It will be before these walls that the doom of our time shall be decided. Here we make our stand. Cavaliers with a one-point lead over Pittsburgh here in the Continental Tire Bowl. Third and eight coming up for UVA. The Athlete trivia question, who holds the Pittsburgh record for most touchdown passes in a bowl game? Rod Rutherford has a couple today. The answer is Matt Cavanaugh, who had four during the 1977 Gator Bowl. One of his offensive linemen that game, our own Mark May. Because we don't have down how many times he was stacked in that game either. Schaub on third down. Ottawa Anderson on his back looking for the Interference flag, but none come. And a, and a good call by Paul Rose, the defensive coordinator, coming with the blitz. And the Ottawa Anderson, as you mentioned, fell down. So it looked like a bad throw, but Ottawa fell down, lost the outcut, incomplete. But good pressure by Pittsburgh for coming with a blitz to force the bad throw or the bad cut. So Pittsburgh going to get the football back as William Tutu Ferguson waits back on his 21-yard line. Tom Hagen, movie fans know who Tom Hagen was, right? Yeah. Robert Duvall character and Godfather. Concierge, right? You're a big, you're yeah. big movie guy. Concierge, J. DJ. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Tom Hagen, not the character, but the real guy is the punter. So only our second flag of the game is now down. You can look at Hagen, just a sophomore. Yeah. See, the referees out there counting guys. 
Yeah, he, he's, he's doing a head count. There is no flag on the play. There's 11 football players yeah. on the team. Right. to be sure. I talked to Penn before the game. I said, no, no mistakes or bad calls, because we don't make them. <laughs> he, and he had to do the head count just to make sure. Ken Wagers, uh, part of our SEC officiating crew today. Just one penalty has been called. It was that personal foul against Ahmad Brooks for uh, being a little bit too rough with Prince Hill Brock and Bro. We've had no turnovers and just the one penalty. Pretty good game so far. Well, that's a great hanger by Hagen. And it's mocked by Ferguson. There was a whistle. That's the second mistake by the official. There was a quick whistle, and that's what that's where you see the Pittsburgh guys out on the field. Pleading with the field judge. There was a quick whistle. They cannot take that away. Got a little excited. Burton whistle. The ball was loose when the ball when the whistle sounded. We'll replay the down. No, no. It, no, so it's you can't do that. I mean that, that that's a bad rule. Yeah. And, and again, Penn told me there'd be no mistakes. That's a bad mistake. Listen. That's the rule, but it's a bad rule, and it should be changed immediately. I mean, you're taking a turnover in field position away from University of Virginia. You cannot make that mistake. Ferguson with the fair catch signal, and the back judge back there just uh, whistled, and it was a clear muck. Virginia should have the football, but instead Tom Hagen has to punt it again. Big break for Pittsburgh. Oh, boy, and a lot of pressure. Hagen goes down. There's a penalty for running into the kicker. Ferguson does not fair catch at this time and dropped in his track. But Hagen was run into. That's a five-yarder. See, I thought maybe he would have threw the 15-yarder to make up for the, the bad call. But he threw the five-yarder. And it's actually the correct call. Now his hands are high, if his hands are low, he takes the ball right off the foot, but he did a good job of trying to avoid it and running into the kicker. That's the correct call. But he should make up for the bad call and give him the 15-yarder. <laughs> look, look at Al, yeah. he, he doesn't understand. And Joe Stevens, one of the backup wide receivers who came in and yeah. made contact with Hagan. To the kicker, which is a five-yard penalty, is declined. Push down. Because yeah, remember, it was fourth and eight. And I, you know what, I just want to talk to them. I, you understand calls that are close. Bang, bang, call, call. But to me, blowing a quick whistle should not happen. That's, uh, we talk about fundamentals all the time up here in the press box about football. Well, there's fundamentals of officiating. And the, the whistle should not be blown until the ball is dead. This is a quick whistle reaction by Al Grove. That's you, he's saying. Yep, oh, pointing right at, the, uh, right at the official. And I'm sure the official knows that it's on him. But, boy, Pittsburgh, first and ten now. So, Grove does not get some personal foul calls. Ball goes over to Pittsburgh. Brandon Myrie finding some space on the right side. And he runs close to a first down. Ty Parham making yet another stop. Myrie had a chance to visit with him a little bit yesterday. Very uh, animated young man. Good ball, good ball player, too. Yeah, he gets a good block right here on Chris Wilson on Blackstock. See how he got, has his hands inside? He's holding the jersey, but his hands are inside. Now, Chris Wilson is a guy that's a draftable tight end because he has speed to catch the ball. But he does not just want to be known as a speed tight end. He wants to be known as a physical blocker. And right there, he won his one-on-one -on -one battle against the fine outside linebacker Blackstock from Virginia. Oh, Wilson, a terrific tight end. 42 catches on the season coming into today is Pittsburgh now calls a timeout for both sides giving us great tight ends and Wilson for Pittsburgh and Heath Miller for Virginia and this Virginia dominated crowd continues to boo this officiating crew.
Timeout to Pittsburgh. They're down by one. Plenty of time left to go, though, in a half. I have to focus, gather everything I've learned, all my successes, all my sacrifices, all my pain, and concentrate that energy into one moment. That's the moment I'll use every single day of my life. There are over 360,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. I'm driven by a desire to help people. I saw the aftermath of a brutal genocide. I was working for the UN War Crimes Tribunal in Rwanda. A lot of who I am comes from having seen these terrible things. I want to be that beacon of hope for people in despair. I want to say, look at this. We can all live and work together and look at what we can do. Welcome back to Continental Tire Bowl. Al Groh got to try to calm down and a couple of calls going against his team. A crucial one on a muff punt. It's bone dead way too early. Pittsburgh with the football down by a point. Rutherford, play action over the middle and that one is thrown. There's Chris Wilson, way high for Wilson. And that is now 14 straight offensive plays that Pittsburgh has not thrown or looked at number one Larry Fitzgerald. Yeah, that's probably the first truly bad pass that Rod has thrown because he had an open receiver. He had Chris Wilson coming across on a crossing route from his tight end position. Stewart High, not only is it bad because it was uncatchable, but he's laid playing his guy out. And when you have a tight end running, you don't want to lay a guy out in the zone because he'll get lit up. Just like Chris got lit up and, yep. and no reward, no ball. Wilson's second team all Big East. Rutherford now 10 of 12 on the day, 20 yards and two touchdown passes. He's tied Dan Marino for the most, most touchdown passes ever in the season by a Pittsburgh quarterback. Myrie on the screen, first down, and Brandon gets it down to the 45-yard line. 16 more yards for him, Muffin Curry with a stop. Uh, uh, Muffin Curry didn't tackle him. Muffin Curry fell at his, and I, I'm not getting on Muffin, it's just is the, the trend in college football for tackling. He fell at his feet. And, and Muffin Curry's doing a good job covering guys, but if you want to go to the next level, you've got to be a tackler, a corner. And I, I just get frustrated when I see guys don't wrap up. Muffin just fell at his feet, and the guy tripped over him. He, he, he didn't, didn't tackle him. Got in the way. Curry, the defensive captain on this team, first and ten. Rutherford, flushed out of the pocket. He's going to take off, and Rutherford picks up. Up, they're going to mark him actually just short of the first down. Uh, a little bit of a poor decision there by, by Rutherford. He could have gotten the first down. All he has to do is take one more step and deliver a blow. He's a tough guy. We've seen him already today deliver blows on defenders. He just headed out a little bit quick. You know where that orange stripe is. Go ahead and get there. Put the ball over there. He's a good enough athlete. Left-handed. The ball's on the outside. The defender can't get it. Just reach the ball over there. First down mark. 6'3", 225. He marked out a smidge behind the first down line. Ball control. You see Pittsburgh all over it. Remember they had a drive that went eight and a half minutes in the first quarter. They had a first and goal from the one and couldn't punch it in. The light, the big fullback takes a hit and fall forward for the first down. Good fill by Ahmad Brooks. But he just got a grass stain on the back of the 34. And he got smoked. Pretty good, good hit. Like 245 pounds. Coming up, no matter which team you think is number one, the only place to see anybody play Big time is ABC, New Year's Day at 4.30 Eastern. The most talked about bowl championship series in history starts as USC looks to prove their championship stuff, taking on Michigan in the Rose Bowl presented by City. And those are the BCS rankings you see, three and four, USC and Michigan, even though USC is number one in the poll. Very convoluted this year. Oh, there's a hit. But look at my read to keep yeah. his legs rolling. That's what I like about the Pittsburgh backs. You see just two plays consecutively where they're carrying Virginia defenders. Check that. That was Jamal Walker. That's his first carry. Or Juwan Walker, excuse me. He played a lot when Brandon Myrie was hurt. And he missed those uh, seven games with a stress fracture in the 
to Juan with a good big pickup. I didn't want to get on, on Brooks too hard there, but he was the one that got the punch of the receiver in the face after he tackled him. Then you got a chance to hit a 240 pound fullback and you get run over. I mean, that's the way it is. Second and one, Walker picking up nine. Going back to him. Walker picks up yet another Pittsburgh first down as we send you back to Reese Davis. All right, fans coming up at halftime. Mark May will join me. Cal gets his season off and finished on the right foot. Offense, offense, offense. I'll tell you why there's so many high scoring games. And not only will we break down the numbers, we'll look ahead to the next few bowls, including one game in which Mark will tell you different philosophies of just how to get that offense to explode. All right, Reese and Mark, we look forward to talking to you there as uh, we look forward to the Larry Fitzgerald. He's got uh, three catches. It's been 19 plays now that Pittsburgh has run without throwing to number one. This drive and the one before it, they make it 20 straight. My back in the backfield, trying to get around the corner. Blackstock and Parham, the two talented linebackers chasing him down. Darryl Blackstock, a guy whose numbers are down from last year, Chris, but uh, Al Gross says he's a more complete player. Yeah, and player. I want to show you why he's more a complete player. Watch him right here. Use his hands nicely. Here comes a big offensive tackle. He gets his hands inside, pushes him off, keeps the offensive tackle away from his body, doesn't get one for one, does not go down the play, and makes a great play for an outside linebacker. So Al Gross is ready. He's more of a complete player because he played the run perfectly for Sam Linebacker. Now Gross says that Darryl visits him just about every day. He's a big film guy, just wants to get better. Rutherford being pursued by Blackstock and Parham. Has to throw it away. And he does so. Well, you see the strength of Rod Rutherford right there, giving the old stiff arm. And Blackstock, he, he, he's got stars in his eyes. I can't believe I'm this free. I have <laughs> Look, he's trying to strip the ball there. He's got to secure the tackle. Don't strip the ball first. Secure the tackle first, then strip the ball. Rutherford again, strong hand, pushed Blackstock away when he's able to make a good decision on throwing it away. Only one play is in counting since Larry Fitzgerald was thrown to. Well, Virginia's doing a good job. They're coming out with everything with a two deep look. That's why Pittsburgh has been able to run the football because you only have seven in the box. So there's an open hole. Now third and ten. There he is right up here. Going blitz, everybody's coming, and they get him. Oh, but how did he let the get that ball away? Amon Brooks had him dead to right. Well, Pittsburgh's having difficulty picking up the blitz. Now, I got on Amon by getting run over by Polite. Well, he, now he makes a big play. Again, the strength of Rutherford. Here comes Brooks. He's going to shoot right through there. There's a missed assignment. Center, you went the wrong way. You missed your block. And Amon Brooks comes in. Looked like he had a little bit of face mask, but he didn't. Right there, the center's got a slide again. He goes for the head. This is the strength of Rutherford. This is a nice job by Rutherford. Falling down. That's a great play by Rod Rutherford. Lucky to get a pick. But hey, things are going well. It's going well. Brooks coming up high as he's said, field off on that base mask. And instead of David Abdul coming in to kick a long field goal, they're going for it on fourth and ten. And Rutherford takes a timeout as he looks over the Virginia defense. And now we'll talk it over with Walt Harris and the rest of his staff. J.D. Brookhart, the Pittsburgh offensive coordinator, about to leave. He has taken the Akron head coaching job. This is his last game with Pittsburgh. Larry Fitzgerald and the rest of the guys had a chance to go to the Lowe's Motor Speedway. Larry Fitzgerald, speedy on the football field, had a chance at a call. Ready to go? Oh, yeah. You excited? Oh, yeah. A little nervous. Let's get here. This or Miami? Okay. This is by far. Tim and the Dale Earnhardt Jr. car spinning around the track. How was it, man? That was great. Have a heck of a lot more excitement to score a touchdown. Would you ever do that? You'd do that, right? Well, yeah, as long as I had a, a passenger airbag. I don't know if Junior's <laughs> got a passenger side airbag. And maybe a sumo suit. You see Larry's numbers. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way. It's been well over 20 plays since they've thrown to him. And, uh, well, that's a credit to the, the Virginia defense team. Yep. They're doing a great job. But, you know, they're, they're playing a seven-man box up front. They're getting hurt running the football. But they're going to take number one out of the game. And so far, they've done a good job of neutralizing them. And they're pre-snap read. That's before the ball snap. They're all making it look the same, which is that two deep look. And they're rolling the different coverages. And Rutherford's having a hard time of reading the coverages on the run as far as Larry Fitzgerald's going. But he's having a good time reading it because he's sitting in the open receivers away from the coverage. 
See, there's the two deep shuttles, two safeties back there. Well, after the timeout, they are still going for it on fourth and ten. Rutherford from behind, blindsided by Jermaine Winborn. And again, the Virginia defense puts pressure on the quarterback and comes through. Uh, this is an Al Groh call, and it's a corner blitz from the short side of the field. Winborn's on the count of four. He's not in frame, but he's going to come right here for you. There's the corner blitz. Rutherford is not aware of the corner blitz. And finally, we have a guy tackle him low enough where he's not strong enough to pull away. Winborn comes in and secures the tackle first before he goes for the strip. But a nice call by Al Groh, his defense. Running the corner blitz to the short side of the field, Rutherford was not aware of it, couldn't deliver and find the hot receiver. Great call, bringing the corner again from the short side of the field. Winborn, a senior from Chesapeake, Virginia, his second sack of the season, second sack of his career. And Al Grove, known as a great defensive mind, throwing everything at Rutherford. Alvin Pierman, who had a 51-yard run earlier in this quarter, gets that and picks up a couple. You got field position here now. Uh, I know this goes against conventional wisdom, but I don't know if I would run the ball there. I got a minute six. I'm gonna start putting the ball in here. I got a quarterback like Matt Schaub that can deliver on time and on target. Let him throw. You're inside a minute now. Schaub underneath, and Pierman is hit as soon as he catches the football by Corey Humphrey, guy from Columbus, Ohio. Uh, again, that's his outlet receiver, Alvin Pierman, the second team receiver for this Virginia offense on the check down. Now the clock continues to run. I, I, Virginia has two timeouts, Chris. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. It's four clock management, in my opinion. Now on a third down. What? I, Boy, Pierman bailed him out, didn't he? Yeah. Running it right up the middle, breaking free for the first down. The problem is, though, they, they huddle up. Now, they could have called that play from the line of scrimmage. You want to run the draw, you get something, and the clock's still running. First down, as soon as the ball the clock stops, the first down, college football, as soon as it's set, they run the clock. There's the timeout. There's 19 seconds left as uh, we saw Marcus Hagan's running onto the field. They blew 10. They yep. gave him 10. They get picked for 10 seconds. 19 seconds left to go. They have his first down. 43 of uh, Pittsburgh. Right, you see that the run defense struggling for Pittsburgh. Got some more college football headed your way on Monday. Jeff Smoker, what a terrific comeback story he has been, leading Michigan State against one of college football's most storied programs, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, the MasterCard Alamo Bowl, 9 Eastern Monday on ESPN, all part of our Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and ESPN2. For more information, you can log on. ESPN.com. Yeah, Steve Peterson, the athletic director of Nebraska, is playing, playing everything close to the vest. And I haven't heard anything. Have you heard anything in Bristol? Uh, no, not. You know, and actually, we asked Walt Harris directly because Harris was hired by Peterson at Pittsburgh. And I said, you know, Walt, because you know, his name has been brought up. And he said, absolutely not. He's not going to Nebraska. There's been you no know, discussions. He's staying in Pittsburgh. So you put the Walt Harris side of the story to rest. But there's a, you know, a lot of, uh, they, they have been very close lipped about it. Yeah. Some of the players, as I said, they, you know, they had a meeting and they want to know what's going on in Nebraska. Yeah, Bo Police said, make no mistake, I'm in charge. Yeah. So and, we'll see. And those players who had the meeting want Polini to stay on as the head coach, but Peterson continues his search. Well, he's not going to bow to player pressure, I'll tell you that okay, right so. now. First and 10, 19 seconds to go in the half after the timeout. Shaw. Everybody's covered. Great job by the Pittsburgh defense. Pierman, though, is able to break free and make the catch. Stops the clock with 11 seconds left. Well, that took eight seconds, though. And again, I think better clock management at the beginning of the drive, Virginia would have more time to work with. But see, they didn't expect Alvin Pierman to bust the draw for 20 yards. He would have had at least 10 seconds left. Now, second and four. The clock stopped on the uh, out-of-bounds playing Shaw, who's a senior quarterback, actually recruited by George Welsh, the former head coach. And Al Grove, he's going to feel some heat. Oh, he, oh, he's a linebacker coach. He's not worried about that. you got to protect your legs, coach. you got to get your hands down there and, and, and shed the blockers. You can't get cut. It's Tyrone Gilliard who cut him a little bit. Shop underneath the Pierman again. I see if Pierman can go out of bounds. And he does. Whoa, Ottawa Anderson. <laughs> Ottawa gave him a nice block to let Pierman get out of bounds. But you, you, if you watch any of our games, yeah, I preach receivers blocking downfield. That's a great job by Ottawa Anderson delivering the blow on Gilliard. 
allowing Pierman to get out of bounds. Anderson, a good tackler on kickoff coverage, showing that Chris had a terrific blocking ability as well. As Connor Hughes comes in to try a 44-yard field goal for Virginia. They try to extend their lead. Flag is down. Hughes' kick is good. And we will check the flag at the line of scrimmage. If there was contact before the snap of the ball, then the play is dead. Hughes has a good leg. Offside on the defense. The penalty is declined. Field goal stands. Halftime. 44-yard field goal by Connor Hughes to cap off this first half. Yeah, no contact, so the play was allowed to continue. It's a free play for Virginia, so if he missed it, he would have got another shot. All right, let's go down to Mike Leach now. He's the pit coach, Walt Harris. Well, Walt, the first of possession, you went 80 yards, came up empty. You didn't take the points. Any reason why? Yeah, it was early in the game. I thought, um, I thought we were going to score, and also if we didn't score, you know, we put them in real bad position, and they made a 99-yard drive. You said it was imperative to run the football. You've done a great job doing that in the first half. What about Fitzgerald freeing him up in the second half? Well, we, we got the ball to him a couple times. We are running the ball good, and that's what we need to maintain. That's our only chance is to continue to be physical up front. They've done a nice job. We've got to continue to play our way on defense as well. All right, Walt, thanks a lot. Pam, let's go back upstairs to you. All righty, Mike. Three catches for Larry Fitzgerald. That is it in the first half as Virginia has that 17 to 13 lead over Pittsburgh. College football halftime report coming up. Mark May and Reese Davis, guys. All right, Pam, and uh, certainly I don't know if Virginia, as Chris Fieldman said, exercised the clock properly at the end and took full advantage, but they did come out of that final drive with a field goal. Walt Harris didn't seem to be upset about the number of touches Larry Fitzgerald's gotten in the first half. Do you think a different strategy would be appropriate? Absolutely. He's the best football player on the field. I think what's key here is you look at early in the football game. Larry Fitzgerald lines up in the backfield, goes into motion. They throw him the football. He catches the football. He's been thrown through three times in this game. He has three receptions. You have to come up with more creative ways to get him involved in the offense, whether you line him up to the slot receiver or if you put him in motion. I think in the second half, you'll see Larry Fitzgerald go in motion more. Now, Al Groves' defensive scheme was pretty good. We saw some of that during the first half about the way they handled him very in a physical fashion. And the reason why is, look, at he's not in motion right here. What you're doing is they're bracketing him. They're getting somebody right in his face right there. Then here comes the secondary player right there. They're making sure that they put at least two players on Larry Fitzgerald, one early, another player late. It's worked thus far in this game. And Mike Gleason asked Walt well, Harris about the decision to go for it down on the goal line in the first half. I thought it was probably the right thing to do to try to get the touchdown. Well, you probably would, but I disagree with that. It was, good to, go, it was, it was good to go for the touchdown, but the problem is you've got Larry Fitzgerald. Put him in a fade pattern. No one's going to stop him one-on-one. -on -one. You split Larry Fitzgerald out. They did it time and time again this season. And they he has Virginia a chance on the goal line, and too. Virginia knocks yeah, Virginia knocks him in because up front they've got a mindset that they're going to run the ball. Where the Panthers think they're going to pass the football in that situation, they didn't. They tried to run the ball. They got stuck. I think in the second half, if they're in the same situation, Walt Harris will throw the ball to Larry Fitzgerald. When the two of us continue at halftime, no Trev, but Trev's gift to us. The ties are present. So the spirit of Trev Alvarez is with us, and we still have the spirit of the Insight Bowl from last night. The Angelo Hall farewell performance didn't turn out to be a winner, though this particular play was. We'll show you this shootout and enough to shootout going on in the Continental Tire Bowl. Back after this. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 2003 Continental Tire Bowl. Brought to you by City Identity Theft Solution. Free help in getting your life back. That's using your card wisely. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship is coming in March. After finishing his worldwide rounds, Santa's getting some well-deserved R&R. He's not thinking about the stuff he forgot. But Radio Shack is. We've got the things you need to make the stuff Santa brought work. Including accessories for PlayStation, Nintendo, and Xbox, so you can enjoy the rest of the holidays. He sure is. Radio Shack. You've got questions, we've got answers. It's more of America's favorite sport from NASCAR Images. Have you ever? No, I've never. Three new DVDs, all in 5.1 surround sound. It's going to be a drag race final. All wins and come 2003. 90 jam-packed minutes from this year's climactic season. Hell yeah. Congratulations, guys. That's a lot of hard work for right there. Then get up close and
the personal with Tony Stewart Smoke. No one ever won a race by standing on the brake pedal. The NASCAR DVD collection. Get them all now. What a finish! All right! This holiday season, shop horsepower. Shop interior space. Shop performance. Shop GMC. Get 4,000 total cash back on a new 2004 GMC Envoy. And during GMC's year-end countdown, make no monthly payments for 90 days when you finance through your dealer and GMAC. See the pros at your GMC dealers. Back on the college game day halftime report, we're at the break in the Continental Tire Bowl. Matt Shaw of Virginia finding his fine tight end. Heath Miller right down the middle. Middle, middle for Miller, easy for me to say. Miller led the team this year with over 50 catches, and Virginia has a four-point lead at the break. Glad to have you with us. Last night, after the Insight Bowl, Virginia Tech's fine defensive back, D'Angelo Hall, did what everyone expected that he would do and announced that he would forego his senior season and make himself eligible for the NFL draft. Hall was joined at his announcement by several family members and several Virginia Tech coaches Frank Beamer saying that he would have a great career on Sunday. D'Angelo Hall had a pretty nice night in his finale for the Hokies against the Cal Golden Bears, and he had a particularly great moment. Hall's not the only guy going to the NFL after this game. So, too, Kevin Jones, the running back from Virginia Tech. Hokies jumped on top. Looks as if they were going to turn this thing into a route. Brian Randall to Marcus Vick. Nice play call, getting it to the backup quarterback, putting him out of the receiver position. Nice job, Marcus Smith. What do you think of this young quarterback that Jeff Tedford has, Aaron Rodgers, who finds Chase Lyman here? He's going to be not a good one. He will be a great quarterback. Anyone who's under Jeff Tedford ends up as a first-round draft pick in the NFL. And here is Kevin Jones, who went over 150 on the night. Hokey, 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 high, check, check, VPI, up 28-14. But now the fighting Tedfords have rallied, and they're up by seven. Watch the mighty Mike, Vincent Strang, all. 150 pounds of it. Little end around reverse action. Cal up by two touchdowns. Virginia Tech cut it to 49-42. Putting out of the end zone to D'Angelo Hall. Look at the way he sets up his blockers in his wall right there. Gets him going to the right. Now he goes all the way to the left. Sets up the field. Points out. You take him. You get him. And I'll do the rest. I'll take it in for the score. D'Angelo Hall returns it for the touch. Special teams good here. Special teams bad there. Three missed field goals, three kickoffs out of bounds. And you know what? Cal had not had a great season kicking field goals. Tyler Fredrickson had missed five in a row, but this for the game with two seconds left. Somebody needs to hang half a hundred in order to win this thing. Fredrickson, Tony Leather, tied up, long enough. Ball game. Inside ball. Goes to those 30 Golden Bears. How about this for Tyler Fredrickson? His final kick as a Golden Bear wins the inside ball. He had 50% on the year. 15 out of 30. Two of the field goals he made beat Virginia Tech and beat USC. You know, if you're going to hit 50%, you might as well make the big one if you're a kicker, right? Clutch. Clutch. What it was. And it has been another example of this offensive firepower galore in the bowl season. Through eight games, we're averaging 74 points per game in combined score. In fact, five of the eight bowl winners have scored at least, Mark, 49. I, I, and I love this. This is exciting. I mean, this is the reason why there's so much scoring, because you get these offensive coordinators. They're sitting back in their meeting rooms with their projectors. They're devising these plays. They're like mad scientists. They go, well, we only have a week to do a game plan during the season. Well, bowl season, they've got three weeks, so they can convince that head coach that, I want to try this play. All season long, they wanted to try certain plays. Now they're getting the opportunity for those trick plays, those special plays. That's why scoring is up. And how about this? How about a lack of familiarity? Because we don't see this as much as a rule during conference play, which is what we see over the last couple of months of the season. Does that factor into it as well? Absolutely, because what they're trying to do is create matchups that they can take advantage of. Now they're seeing teams that they're not used to seeing during the regular season, and there's players that they can create matchups against. These offensive coordinators and head coaches are taking advantage of those matchups. And I love it because this is the way it's supposed to be. Trev Elberts, Chris Spielman, those 10 to 7 games, they're boring. Everybody <laughs> likes the high scoring games. I enjoy the high scoring games too. If the defensive games are well played, which is something we might see as we go on down the line, particularly in the Nokia Sugar Bowl, those two can be exciting. Also makes it very difficult to predict just how the Bowl Challenge Cup will play out. ESPN presents a trophy to the conference with the best winning percentage in the Bowl, minimum of three games played. 
And Mark, I'm going to the Wax already off to a great start, and the Wax, with two more games left, both against six and six teams, they win one more. 750 winning percentage is going to be pretty hard to cut. But some of the teams haven't taken the field yet. Is there any confidence right now that you look at the matchups and say, okay, maybe they're positioned to, the matchups look nice on paper anyway? Well, I want to change the rules, Lee, and this is the reason why. The MAC conference should have at least four teams playing in bowl games, but they only have two games. They went 2-0. and all. They're undefeated. The rules say for the Bowl and Challenge Cup, you must play in at least three games. It's unfair for the MAC. I'm standing up for the MAC conference. They need to be involved in this. Is it just because Trev's not here yes. that you're going to be angry? <laughs> you're going to be angry at the Bowl Challenge Cup? He's mad at the Sonic Bowl Mania Challenge, and you're going to be mad at the Challenge Cup? Well, he's Cup? mad at the Sonic Bowl Mania Challenge because he's losing. That, he well, the rules. that does have a little bit to do with it. When Mark and I continue, we will look ahead to the next few bowl games. Mark will tell you just how two teams get their offenses going. This is how Pittsburgh got it going with Brandon Myrie going into the end zone. Pittsburgh tell me. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your deodorant is? Get Right Guard, the only one with a power stripe of extra protection. Right Guard, Hello. right to the end of the day. John Lynch and his mom brought Chuck Flynn new Campbell's Chunky Grilled Chicken and Sausage Gumbo. It filled him up right. Sure beats another frozen dinner. Chuck ate heartily. Later, his buddies ate their hearts out. CEO at Sanders. Let me read some of this. 1,200 separate shipments, national rollout, everything arrived on time. I was asking for a miracle, and you delivered. Thank you. Shipping, you can count on. Small miracles included. Everyone, my office. You too, Sam. UPS. What can Brown do for you? on the college game day halftime report. We're at the break in the Continental Tire Bowl, Pittsburgh and Virginia. 17-13, the Cavaliers with the lead at halftime over Larry Fitzgerald, Rod Rutherford, and the rest of the Kansas. Don't forget, much more bowl action coming your way. Capital One Bowl Week will resume Monday night, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. The artist formerly known as the Fighting Frankie Solichs Nebraska Cornhuskers taking on Michigan State and Jeff Smoker. 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 6 o'clock out on the West Coast for the MasterCard Alamo Bowl. And certainly we're looking forward to that, especially with all the intrigue and subplots going on with Nebraska. That's coming your way on December 29th, the following day. EV1.net Houston Bowl, Navy and Texas Tech. That's at 4.30 Eastern on ESPN. We're going to talk more about that in just a second. The Pacific Life Holiday Bowl, Washington State and Texas. The Cougars can not have the yellow flag flying and the turnovers. Perhaps they can stay with Matt Brown's team and the Silicon Valley Football Classic. UCLA and Fresno State. Opportunity for the WAC in the Bowl Challenge Cup. ESPN 2, 10.30 Eastern Time on the night before New Year's Eve. Let's go back to that EV1.net Houston Bowl. It's going to be Texas Tech and Navy. The high-powered option attack of the midshipmen on the Commander-in-Chief trophy against Texas Tech in the aerial assault of B.J. Simmons. Two different philosophies in offense here, but this say. is going to be interesting to watch this game. Paul Johnson's Navy team will run the ball with Kyle Eckert, the fullback. He averages about 100 yards a game. They will pound the ball and try to keep it away from Texas Tech. Now, Texas Tech has a pretty good quarterback. He's thrown for over 5,300 yards in B.J. Simmons and Mike Leach's spread offense. They will throw the ball. They will try to score as many points as fast as possible. Now, look at B.J. Simmons here. Can throw off the back foot, gets the job done. He makes just about every throw imaginable. They will spread the ball out, run a little play-action pass, but what he likes to do is throw the ball down the field vertically and put points on the scoreboard. This should be an interesting game as Paul Johnson's Navy team 
can run the football effectively, it will hold down the scoring of Texas Tech, but I don't think they will. Texas Tech is used to scoring. If they get the ball with 30 seconds, they can go 50 yards and put points on the board. That's the difference between these two teams. If Navy's behind in this game, it's going to be very, very difficult to play catch-up. There's no question there's a contrast in style. Well, Mike Leach said recently, we're not that different. Try to spread the ball around <laughs> to different people and then create matchups and so forth. I think that's what he was talking about. Certainly different in the way they approach it. Absolutely. I think there's a big difference between these football teams. <laughs> and, and I think it's, I, I think if you look at Texas Tech's offense, they will probably score at least 45 points in this game. And not saying anything against Navy. It's just the, the type of offense that they have. They like to attack, 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 and put points on the board. And I think once Navy gets behind and they have to throw the football, that'll play right into Mike Leach's hands. I think maybe they want to be stubborn, too, something you guys have been a, a proponent of all season. Don't go away from what you do, right. which is something that I know that, uh, that you have advocated also in the case of the Pittsburgh Panthers and not going away from what you do. I mean, do not go away from number one. Pittsburgh hasn't really been able to get at Fitzgerald that much. Only three catches in the first half. We'll look ahead to the second half after this. You know, I dated a girl named Georgia. I had to break it off, though. It's about Come love, on. man. That's what it's For about. when you need it most, our longest-lasting Energizer Max ever. After that, I told myself, Do you have the bunny inside? I am not dating girls named after fish. This new year, lose weight and save money. With Net Zero High Speed, you can surf the web up to five times faster than standard dial-up. Why wait for expensive DSL or cable? Get Net Zero High Speed now for just $14.95 a month at netzero.com. Welcome to the House of Fear. We have hundred and seventy kinds of fear from all over the world. The bill for color coaches and tested it by country style and color. Call me when you're ready. I'm ready. All the same ad. Yeah. You can go around the world and not find a better beer than Samuel Adams. Always a good decision. I'm the senior at the University of Pittsburgh, majoring in environmental studies and political science. I chose Pitt because I wanted an academic challenge. Throughout Pitt, there are many nationally ranked programs, from the writing program to medicine to philosophy. So many talented students are here. More Marshall and Rhodes Scholars have come out of Pitt in the last 15 years than any other college in Pennsylvania. The opportunities here are limitless. Coming to Pitt was the best decision I ever made. Drunk. Trashed. Wasted. You drink and drive, you lose. You'll be arrested. Cut. Jailed. You're going to jail. It's the law. Every 10 minutes, there's a drunk driving arrest in Illinois. It doesn't matter who you are or where you live. If you drink and get behind the wheel, you're going to pay the price. Take a deep breath and you blow. Drink and drive, not on Illinois road. The law says it all. You drink and drive, you lose. Today, darling, we're going to give ourselves some big treats. Ooh, Today, we're going to have some serious fun. Yeah. Oxygen is the only American network for all new Advent. Oh, it's uh, wonderful to be here. It's certainly a thrill. Eddie and Patsy are back for eight brand new episodes. Nothing is a sin. All new Advent, Friday nights at 9, only on the Oxygen Network. Brought to you by Comcast. College game day halftime report rolls on. Continental Tire Bowl at halftime. Taking up just around the corner. Virginia's on top of Pittsburgh. 17-13 at the break. And don't forget, double coverage weekend in the NFL. Donovan McNabb and the Eagles with their eye on home field throughout the playoffs. They take on the Redskins. 8.30 Eastern time tonight on ESPN and ESPN HD. NFL prime time starts half hour before that. Sunday night football. Ravens having just fight to get in the playoffs. Jamal Lewis with his eye on the rushing record. 7.30 Eastern time for prime time. Game starts at 8.30 Eastern. Also on ESPN and ESPN high definition. I'd like to redefine a little bit of what perhaps these teams will do in the second half in the Pittsburgh-Virginia game. I think it's very simple for Pittsburgh. They've got to get the ball to Larry Fitzgerald. Plain and simple. Find a way to get him the ball effectively in the second half. And for Virginia, for Al Groh. You're going against a defense that's given up 291 yards or more three out of their last four games on the ground. Run the football. And putting themselves in some second and long situations a couple of times there. And then they ran it at the end of the half. Questionable clock management. That's yeah. why we're here to provide the questions. They will provide the answers. Second half of the Continental Tire Bowl coming just around the corner.
Jim's getting married. This is major. We get to have a bachelor party. Six days. Oh, my God. To the most outrageous. You naughty girl. This is awesome. Hilarious. If you want to come to the wedding, you cannot act like this. Are you saying I'm impolite or something? Comedy of the year that will touch you. It's not what it looks like. Well, lunch is uh, served. Like you've never been touched before. Marriage is not about animal lusting. I wear that it feels good. American Wedding. Own the DVD and video Friday. Everyone wants a piece of the Stiff Meister. Maybe this isn't the best time to say it, but uh, I think you're really beautiful. Well, I, I've always been attracted to you too, Paul. Wait, hold on one sec, babe. I excuse me? Want to get away? Now you can with Southwest Airlines Internet Specials. Just $39 to $99 when you purchase by January 19th. Only at Southwest.com. You are now free to move about the country. Who's the most convenient bank in America? U.S. Bank. The one with full-service branches in more states, more ATMs in more convenient places, and more 24-hour banking options, both over the phone and online at usbank.com. Best of all, everything we do is backed by our one-of-a-kind five-star service guarantee. The most convenient bank in America? That's easy. That's us. U.S. Bank. Time at the second annual Continental Tire Bowl, and Virginia has a 17 to 13. William T.T. Ferguson gets tattooed around the 11 yard line. Terrific coverage by the Virginia return team. Isaiah Aka Juba among those in there. I hope I didn't blow Isaiah's name because that was oh, a heck of a hit. It was a great hit, and it's almost like. Tutu would want to wear a Tutu F next time. Oh, There's a shot right there. Good job to close the game in front of the ball. Tutu's a tough kid. He bounced right back up. But great coverage by special teams by Virginia. Now, Al Grove made an interesting point that they sacrificed some of their defense by trying to take Larry Fitzgerald out of the game. And they, I, I, I stay with it. You've got to leave you home the three catches, but the run defense has been steady because of the taking out of Larry Fitzgerald. Pittsburgh with 118 yards on the ground and keep it that way as Myrie gets nothing on his first carry of the second half. Brandon had 13 carries for 70 yards in the first half. But Jermaine Winborn came in on a blitz. He was covering down on Larry Fitzgerald on the snap of the ball. He was on a corner tight blitz and he's on a counter for for blockers. He just comes in and makes a good open field tackle on Brandon Myrie. Larry Fitzgerald now 24 plays in a row in which Pittsburgh has you know, won 24 plays and not thrown to him. Second and 11, actually a loss of the yard on that play for Myrie. There's the pitch again. Myrie gets it deep in his backfield. Good contained by that Virginia defense. Brennan Schmidt from his defensive end spot holding his ground well, and Derek Blackstock around the ball as well. What is happening is when you play a 34 defense, you can put Daryl Blackstock over Larry Fitzgerald. See, that disrupts the time in the route. Then you have Larry Fitzgerald trying to block Blackstock. He's just pushing him out of the way and gets in on the tackle. But the 34 defense allows you to remove linebackers from the box and cover down on great wide receivers like Larry Fitzgerald when he's lined up in the slot position or the inside receiver position. Now third and seven, Panthers opening drive of the second half. Love the first. Stepping up, throws it, deflected, and picked off. Intercepted by Robbie Catterson. As Rutherford gets the pass deflected, and Virginia has it in terrific field position. Again, with Fitzgerald out of the game because they're committing a safety to a corner to him, there's an open receiver in the middle of the field on that cover two zone. But if you have an open receiver, you've got to be able to deliver the football. You see Chris Kenny with a push. The ball's delivered high. The ball's deflected. Catterson playing perfect safety position is there for the tip roll and hands it up the field. And not going out of bounds. He's trying to get as much as he can. That's a great job of playing position football for free safety. Greg Lee tips it. His shot goes down. Might have been stepped on by one of his offensive linemen. And the guy who made the interception, Catterton, is one of seven true freshmen who have played for Al Grow this year. That's Catterton's first career pick. 
We talked about Al Groen and, and the emphasis and importance he puts on recruiting. And it's good for his recruits now to see that, look, this guy's not afraid to play true freshmen. If you come to Virginia, if you're good enough, you're going to play. Doesn't matter if you're a freshman or a senior. And 24 of the Cavaliers on their 2 deep are either freshmen or sophomores. Patterson with that. That's Ryan Sawyer. Oh, he had a touchdown pass, and he dropped it. Sawyer separating himself just a little bit from Corey Humphreys, but he couldn't bring it in. Well, he did separate. He was going to run a corner. This is what I like about Matt Schaub, the versatility he has as a quarterback. You see him running and throwing the ball on the run and throwing a strike, and all Sawyer's got to do is make the easy catch. It's a perfect strike. He goes with his hands. Looks like he took his eye off it right at the last second. Sawyer had a couple of catches for 27 yards in the first half, but that was a dropped touchdown pass by third and 13 to Cavaliers. Schaub underneath, completes it to Peterman, and he is stopped short of the first down. Alvin Peterman has a brother who will be coming here next year. Andrew. Good shot, recognizing the blitz by Pittsburgh. Knowing the weakness of the defense is in the flat. Does not try to make a big play, delivers to Pierman. Maybe he can get the first down. If not, they get good yards to give their field goal kicker a shorter kick. Pierman went to Charlotte Country Day School. His younger brother, Andrew, will attend Virginia next year on a football scholarship. 31-yard field goal attempt now for Connor Hughes, one of the best field goal kickers in the country. Hit from 44 earlier today. 31 just a chip shot for him. And Virginia, after the Catterton interception, extends its lead, now leading 20 to 13. Connor Hughes now two for two on his field goal today. Virginia extending its lead over Pittsburgh 20 to 13. Robbie Catterton with an interception. The first turnover of the game helped set up that field goal. Pittsburgh gets it for the second time this half. Taken at the goal line by Tutu Ferguson. And Ottawa Anderson tackles him down around the 20 yard line. More college football coming your way. Capital One Bowl Week continues with Jeff Smoker and Michigan State taking on the Nebraska Cornhuskers in the MasterCard Alamo Bowl, 9 Eastern Time Monday on ESPN. All part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and ESPN2. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. And boy, what a terrific job John L. Smith did at Michigan State this year, taking over a chaotic program and leading his team to the to a bowl. Larry, the real Heisen winner, according to those Pittsburgh fans, he came in second to Jason White, the quarterback by Oklahoma. Play action, Rutherford underneath to his fullback, is top of Polite. And Polite picks up about seven. That's Blue's second catch of the day. Polite's been doing a good job today running, catching, blocking, but what we haven't seen and we saw it one time in the first half is when Walt Harris lined Larry Fitzgerald up in the backfield and they were able to get him involved in the offense. I'm just surprised we have not seen that yet since then. It was a successful play for about 20 yards. Lined up in the slot now, and that's something that Mark May was discussing at halftime with Bruce Davis, creating ways to get the guy the ball. It's been 27 straight plays. They haven't even thrown to him. Make it 28. Brandon Myray. Nice little cutback, and Brandon picks up the first down as he is tackled down around the 43-yard line. 17 more for Myree. Brandon Myree in the first half at 70 yards on the ground. Average five and a half yards a carry. And he also got it done through the air. Brandon leading the way with four catches, 43 yards, including his touchdown catch. An 18-yarder from Rutherford in the second quarter. So a solid game for this senior. First and 10 for the Panthers. Play action. Over the middle, there's Fitzgerald, and he makes one of his patented circus catches for the first down. Seems like any time you get the ball near him, he's going to bring it in. Well, again, they're coming with a crossing route. Watch Larry. You know, he's going to recognize the weakness of the defense. He sees it's his zone, but he knows the weakness of the zone is across the field, so he gets behind Breslin, the linebacker, and Rutherford 
finally looked for Fitzgerald and was able to deliver the ball because one, Larry didn't get disrupted off the line of scrimmage. He's allowed to run free. He's going to get down the field and make something happen. And finally, they've gone 27 plays in a row without throwing to him. They do there and get the first down on a 28-yard play. Brandon Myrie around the left side, breaking a couple of tackles. Out close to another first down as we head down to the field of Mike Leeson. Well, Pam, you and Chris talk about the fact not getting the ball to Fitzgerald, a testament to his uh, skills. Earlier this year in a loss to West Virginia, Adam Pacman Jones and Brian King, King were covering Fitzgerald. Jones drilled him. The result was a pass interference, and King said he went up on top and batted the ball, and Fitzgerald still caught it. After the play, King said he and Jones looked at each other and said, we have no answers for this guy. That's quite a testament to his skills. Well, it sure is, Mike, and we saw it time after time this season. There was pass interference on him. There was double, triple coverage. The guy still caught the football. Strong hand. There's a jump above everybody to get that high ball. Brandon Marie over 100 yards on the ground, but he gets nothing there. As Brennan Schmidt, the defensive end, makes the stop. And let's take a look at our top five catches for Larry Fitzgerald this season. This is one against West Virginia. The triple coverage against Texas A&M. And again, there's that, that play. King and Pac-Man Jones that Mike Gleason was referring to. And a guy makes catches anyway. And you said you can kind of see a, a, a cross between Randy Moss and Lynn Swan. In this yeah, I mean, he's he got everything you need to be the big time this season. Now those NCAA records, only a sophomore. Rutherford in trouble, retreating. And has to throw it away as he was being pursued again by Schmidt. Brandon Schmidt was very active so far here in the third quarter. It's a good job by Brandon Schmidt not chasing the run stake down the line of scrimmage, playing his position first, forcing the throw away by Rod Rutherford. Schmidt, Schmidt was second in the ACC behind his teammate Chris Canney as far as tackles per game for defensive linemen. He's now in the top ten of Virginia's career tackles with his performance so far today. You know, a play that I'm surprised I haven't seen him run to Larry Fitzgerald. I'm going to show you where he is. Is that fade stop where he just throw the high ball. He's got such a height of done. He's down here on the corner. Right here's Larry. And he can go up and get it. Third and nine. Virginia coming on the blitz. They pick it up. And escaping as the flag comes down is Rutherford. Schmidt again in on the tackle, but Brooks was among those coming in on the rush. Well, we will uh, see what the penalty flag's all about. Usually in the area of holding, there it is. Well, that one is coming back. We'll see where this, right here, in this area is going to be the hold. They're coming with the blitz. There's the Mike linebacker, the middle linebacker. It's a three-man blitz. They're bringing four off of one side, and the hold came on the offensive tackle. It's a good job of Chris Canty pursuing the football. On the offense. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. So on fourth down, we get our first look on the field goal kicking team. See if they're going to go with David Abdul. Actually, it is a new kicker. They have pulled Abdul. That is J.J. Gibney who has come in. So Abdul, who missed the extra point, replaced by Gibney. J.B. Gibney. And Gibney delivers. A 29-yarder for J.B. So Walt Harris has moved to get the struggling David Abdul out of there. Pays off. Gibney makes it a four-point effort. J.B. Gibney is a senior place kicker and punter did not see any game action this year until right now and he came in and kicked a 28 yard field goal to cut the lead to 20 to 16 replacing David Abdul who has struggled this season only made half of his field goals and planked an extra point earlier in this game so what a way to start giving a senior with his first collegiate kick and he makes it 28 yard field goal at the feet taking it back for Virginia and Weeks only has a couple of guys to beat and he tumbles out of bounds around the 32-yard line. Weeks averaging 21 yards on seven kickoff returns coming into this game. Bust that one for 68. Yeah, special teams is a difference maker at any level. Pee-wee, high school, college, pro, it doesn't matter. It's a good job of blocking 
bending the wall, and a nice cut right there. Then the first of breaking tackles, the people diving at ankles. Gresley does a pretty good job, and Weeks tackles himself. <laughs> he ran out of room. Look at the, look at the wall set up right there with the seam. He sees it, and he misses, forces the guy to miss the tackle. Puts a little shake there, and if he if he doesn't run out of bounds, he scores. So Alvin Kinnaman getting the handoff on first down. That 68-yard return, and here is the field goal by Gibney. Comes in there like he kicked all his life. David Abdul, the kicker who has been, who was pulled, and one of the assistants going over. And this is why he was pulled, Chris. Well, he struggled all year. He was, he was batting 50% all year, then he missed that extra point. And I like the assistant coach that's going to give him a little pat on the and saying, hang in there, you're going to get your opportunity. Turn of the sophomore. Pierman is wrestled down. He should have enough for the first down. H.B. Blade. Now, there's a guy. Yeah. You know his dad very well. Yeah, his dad was probably one of the, if not the toughest guy that I've ever played with. And the NFL is Benny Blades. And I, I realize I'm getting old when I see <laughs> guys that I play with and I'm doing games on TV with their sons. But H.B. is a true freshman. Has really come on. Is really a smart football player for a true freshman. He's getting a start today and playing well. He's going his dad proud. Yep, starting because Brian Bennett had a spleen injury when he was hit by Kellen Winslow in the last game of the regular season against Miami. Job up top, going to the end zone, and it is incomplete. Josh Lay in on the coverage, and Dayon Williams, first time they have thrown to yet another true freshman. Dayon's from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. An outstanding coverage by Josh Lay right here, playing the ball and not the man, knowing where he's on the field, seeing the man with his terrific going up to the highest point and knocking the ball away. But it's a great job of playing that football, not panicking, tackling the receiver, but playing the ball. Josh Lay, good corner play, Josh. Lay, the sophomore from Aliquippa, Pennsylvania, he actually started the first four games of the season and came off the bench, playing well today. Oh, that one, dangerous as they go again towards Williams. But Shante Spencer was right in the way. A good breakup by Shante, and that ball was late. We talked about the importance of quarterbacks delivering the ball on time. He was late, which allowed Sean Day to get the break. And he's almost going distance the other way. There's the throw. It's a little bit behind it. Sean Day gets a nice break. And I know that a lot of pro scouts like Sean Day. And Mikey, the toughest guy on the Pittsburgh football team. In fact, one of the coaches told me that nobody would ever fight him. They're afraid of him. Spencer, 6'2", 180, a senior. Good play, now third and ten, rush coming on Schaub, he retreats, gets it off nicely to Pierman, good block by Heath Miller, as Pierman appears to be short of the first down, but Miller got a good late block. And Pierman, one of two Charlotte natives on this Virginia Watch, team. they have a bunch formation right here, they're going to take these guys here to clear out this defense, they're going to set Pierman right here, see how the defense is clearing out, all the defenses are running with the bunch route formation. We got Miller on a block right there, but a good hustle by Pittsburgh to run down. Watch Heath Miller now. This is why he'll be a complete player. He does a good job of kicking out his man. Pierman hitting the hole, but great pursuit by the Pittsburgh defense getting downfield to keep it from a huge game. Little more yep. hustle, yes. Yeah. Senior from Cape May Courthouse, New Jersey. Schaub going the other way for Pierman, and he is snowed under. A great job by H.B. Blade, Benny's kid, coming in on the stop, and they think he is their middle linebacker of the future. Just Look, a freshman. Now, let me tell you why it's a great job, because he's playing man-to-man, -man and they have the correct call on the screen for man-to-man -man defense. Here's H.B. right here. Watch him now. He's sneaking in. There's H.B. He's going to beat the blocker one-on-one. -on -one. The, the blocker's trying to get out to H.B., but H.B. has too much speed and makes a great open field tackle on Alvin Pierman and a great stop on fourth down for the Pittsburgh defense. So far, both teams have two huge fourth down stops. Virginia with the goal line stand. Pittsburgh taking points off the board for Virginia with the stop right there on fourth down. And H.B. Blades, in case you're wondering, because you know, not only did his father go to Miami, he had a couple of uncles who were terrific players as well, Brian and Al. He kind of uh, dismissed Miami right away, wanted to make his own way and he's doing it at Pittsburgh. 
Double Cup N2's exclusive presentation of the 2003 Continental Tire Bowl. Brought to you by Continental Tire North America. They're not just tires, they're Continental Tire. And City Identity Theft Solution. Free help in getting your life back. That's using your card wisely. Welcome back to Erickson Stadium in Charlotte on just a beautiful late December day. A lot of people out there in the short, you know, just short sleeves and maybe sweatshirt weather. A spectacular day for the second annual Continental Tire Bowl. Pittsburgh with the ball back on the 19 after a fourth down stop. And Canty right in the middle of things. Chris Canty stuffing the ball carrier, Brandon Myrie. Great job by Chris Canty. Defeating the blocker one-on-one, -on -one, taking his gap and coming back from the outside. Watch Chris right here. He's over the guard. Watch him get his hands inside. See that? Then he pushes the blocker off. Two gaps him. Ooh. Comes back and tackles Brandon Byron with one big paw. And that's a big paw at 6'7". <laughs> well, we mentioned Alvin Thierman being from Charlotte. Chris Canny also is from Charlotte. Went to Charlotte Latin High School, but did not play in last year's game here because of a hurt arm. Playing today and playing well. He's going to be 10-pound folks. Second down, Rutherford, Fitzgerald catches it again. This time for a short game. Picks up about five as uh, Daryl Blackstock is in on the coverage. That's Larry's fifth catch. Well, Larry kind of just sashayed, as they say, off the line of scrimmage. He's going to come in and sit down on a read route again. Sitting in between the zone, but a good job by Blackstock. Another example of why Al Gross said he's become more of a complete player besides the pass rush because he uses him in coverage. He's doing a good job of playing disciplined zone defense and eliminating the yak yards for Larry Fitzgerald. Now third and four for Pittsburgh. Fitzgerald in the slot right. They're going towards him. And a nice breakup. That is Almonto Muffin Curry. Much shorter than Larry Fitzgerald, but a good defensive play. Yeah, Muffin Curry's been a big reason why Larry Fitzgerald has been kind of slowed down a little bit today. He's playing man-to-man -man coverage on the bigger Fitzgerald. Rutherford's looking for Larry all the way, but Muffin Curry with the break on the football, disregarding the ball, but going for the sure tackle. That's good closing speed. Right there's the burst. See that second gear burst? Sees Larry in the air and going to make the tackle. He's a good, solid player for Al Gros defense. Muffin about five or six inches shorter than Larry Fitzgerald. First time that they've thrown to him, and he hasn't caught it. Andy Lee's first punt. He is famous for his hangers that get way high. He does that. As Marcus Hagan gets it, plenty of flags coming down. Hagan's tackle down at his 35. 50-yard punt for Andy Lee. They got Blackstock on the push in the back. And Pettiford. Hustling down there, cover punt. Blackstock's got to save it. Got to throw his hands up. Don't push him. Just run into him. He'll never call it. First down. What I talk about is, is just throw your hands up. You can block the guy in the back. There comes Blackstock. See, he pushed him. You just have to run into him. No penalty. You push him, you get flagged. It's all about commitment. You gotta be there for it, buddy. Golf, music, chess. Alright, I gotta go. in Erickson Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. Right now, Virginia are leading Pittsburgh. Uh, Elmondo Curry, the 5'8 uh, cornerback, breaking up the big pass on third down with uh, Larry Fitzgerald. Now, Curry says because he's 5'8, he's always had to prove himself. Now, during pregame, he always wears this blue jersey. Now, it actually belongs to the Hampton Youth League, and the number belonged to his, or the jersey belonged to his brother, Kenny, who loved playing football, but he played with asthma. Two years ago, when Kenny was 12, he had a severe asthma attack, so severe his lung collapsed. And he died at the hospital. Now Almondo wears it during pregame, wears it under his regular jersey during games, and he says a day doesn't go by when he doesn't think about the fact Kenny never got the chance to do some of the things that he has done. And suddenly, facing a guy like Larry Fitzgerald doesn't seem so insurmountable. All right, Mike, thanks. That's a, a great story for 
Muffin Curry, and uh, boy, Al Groh is one of the fans. He says he doesn't usually like little guys, but you got to love Curry. He's a ball hawk. He's always around the ball, and as uh, Lundy carries it for a first down, and Curry obviously not afraid. In fact, likes, he's one of these guys who likes challenges. Yeah, let me cover Larry Fitzgerald. Well, if you're a corner, you want to be like that guy. You want, you want to be the guy that says, put me on the challenge. I mean, you can't have a timid corner. You got to have an attacking corner, and he certainly is, and wants those challenges. But it's interesting. We heard that story about uh, Muffin Curry. Uh, and last week we did the Division Three championship game with Blake Elliott, who ended up being the player of the game. His brother is an inspiration to him, who's having some troubles of his own. And Elliott, boy, did he respond in grand fashion. Shaw, first down throw, completes it to Fontel Mines, another one of those true freshmen who were playing for Al Groh. His first catch should be good enough for a first down. Well, I was down on the field, and I'm looking at these freshmen that Al Groh keeps bringing into Virginia, and I'm saying, who is 84? So I look down the roster, and it's Fontel Mines, 6'5", 205, true freshman wide receiver. And again, those kids at home watching this game that are being recruited by Al Groh saying, oh, he's playing all these true freshmen. Yeah. I'm good enough to play there. I'll get to play in Virginia next year. I don't need a red shirt. Mine's sixth catch of the season. His first touchdown of his collegiate career was a touchdown, or his first catch, excuse me, was a touchdown against North Carolina as Lundy gets the carry on first down. So Virginia, the last two drives before this one, they had terrific field position for Al Groh starting at their own 18 and then the 32 after the long kickoff return by Marcus Weeks and they got three full points out of that Chris. Well yeah and you, it was a decision on fourth down to go for it instead of taking points on the board the last time they were down there. It was a great play by H.C. Blake but they're moving the ball systematically and starting to gain confidence. Play action. Shaw looking for Ryan Sawyer a little wrestling match with Shantae Spencer, but the ball falls incomplete. That's a great job of Shantae Spencer, using his body and looking and leaning, and not getting his hands up there, but doing the receiver with his body, because Sawyer tried to come back for the ball, and Shantae Spencer does a good job of adjusting with the wide receiver. Now, Shaw delivers the ball on target, not time. Once Sawyer, Sawyer tries to sneak in behind him, but Shantae does a great job with his body, shielding Sawyer from the football. Excellent play. After the play, personal foul on the offense. 15-yard penalty. Third down. Let's see after the play. And Wally Lundy. Yeah. Lundy with the retaliation. That's the second personal foul now called against the Cavaliers. And that's not typical of now grow coach football team. Third and 21 after the personal foul. Three receivers in for Shaw, going for Sawyer. Gets him right on the break. And Sawyer is stopped a couple of yards short of the first down by Josh Lay. Now, now third and 21. Are you going to give him the out cut? And I talked about the ball being thrown on time and not being late. That time it was thrown on time and not late. But Josh Lay has got to make the play. You've got to come up and tackle the guy. You can't let a guy run for four yards or five yards after he catches a 17-yard out. you got to be on top of him to deliver the blow. Sawyer, fortunately for Lay, was knocked out about three yards short of the first down as we see Tom Hagen in the punt. Yogi Roth is uh, standing back at his eight-yard line. Yogi is his given name, in case you're wondering, not a nickname, and that is kicked out of bounds at the 19-yard line. take a look at this Sonic Bowl Mania challenge after eight games as some uh, ESPN on-air guys were uh, given the opportunity. What you do is you pick your pick your winners of the bowl games and you get points. Sean McDonough, number one. Dave Rebson, our uh, ESPN radio college football host, is second. That Reese Davis guy is third. Travis fourth. And still a lot more to come. A lot more uh, games to be played. Where's Herbie? I thought Herbie would be at least yeah, up Herbie's there. Herbie's not in the top ten. Oh. Keep track of that. The uh, Sonic Bowl Challenge throughout Capital One Bowl Week. Over the middle and complete. A big game to Chris Wilson, the talented tight end. Wilson picking up 33 yards. That's his first catch of the day. 
Lance Evans chasing him down for the tackle. Well, here's the weakness of cover two defense. Right there is cover two. Safeties are out. See the safety? He's running over to Fitzgerald, which allows the tight end to get down to the middle of the field. Now, Kai Parham, being a middle linebacker, could not let him go. Since the safeties vacate the middle of the field, you as the linebacker have to turn that into man-to-man -man coverage on the tight end. He dropped the tight end. Rod Rutherford waited for Chris Wilson to get open and hit him. Contact. Maybe uh, offsides on Virginia as, uh, as, again, Chris Wilson's first catch of the day. A terrific senior tight end. Well, that's what Al Gro was, was talking about. We're giving up something. So when you take the safety and you Our run him right... Offside on the defense. Five-yard penalty. When you run him right out of the middle of the field and run him in favor of Fitzgerald too much, that vacates the middle of the field. So then you, as a defense, you have to put somebody in the middle of the field, which is the Mike linebacker. Well, the Mike linebacker dropped his coverage too early on Chris Wilson. Rod Rutherford, being a senior, understands that. He lives the strike to Chris Wilson on a scene pass. No penalties yet against Pittsburgh. That's the fourth penalty against the Cavaliers. And after the offsides, it's first and five. Brooks, another flag down as Ahmad Brooks tackles Rod Rutherford for the sack. And we have to check out yet another penalty flag. Well, that's the speed of Ahmad Brooks. Freshman All-American linebacker running down Rod Rutherford. And he's, he's 6'3", 245 pounds. On the offense, the penalty is declined. Second down. This is the second annual Continental Tire Bowl in Charlotte, North Carolina. Virginia beat West Virginia here last year, and right now the Cavaliers doing a good job of keeping Larry Fitzgerald in control as they lead Pittsburgh 20 to 16. Pam Ward, Chris Spielman, and Mike Leeson joining you. And five catches, 77 yards, no touchdowns for Larry. Is that streak at stake about touchdowns? That's right. Yeah. It is very much at stake for Larry Fitzgerald. They haven't come close to catching a touchdown pass today. So after the Brooks sack, second and 17, fourth sack of the year, Rutherford stepping up, Chris Canny won't let him go. Canny, the Charlotte native, able, able to uh, corral him around the ankle. That's good football, both sides of the ball. Good job by Chris Canny. Hanging on, getting a good pass rush, and, and a great job by Rod Rutherford, not getting sacked and getting positive yards. You know, the one thing that I have not seen, again, I'm going to make this point, is that one way Walter Harris got Larry Fitzgerald involved with the offense is line them up in the backfield and let him run around from that position where you take defensive backs out of the coverage and the force a linebacker to cover him. Larry up here, I'm going to point to where he is. There's the red line, line of scrimmage. Got to get to the yellow line. Third and 14 for the Panthers. Rutherford, Parham gets him. Brennan Schmidt cleans up as the Virginia defense. Good coverage downfield, and Rutherford had to take off and couldn't get far. Yeah, that time in the defensive look, now they lined up in the cover two, and I talked about this earlier on the snap of the ball. They went to a three deep. They brought one of the safeties into the middle part of the field at 17 yards. The other safety took deep, and the corners played off. Fitzgerald ran deep, and he ran right into the coverage. So well, good job again by this Algro defense, keeping Fitzgerald in check. Andy Lee's second punt, his first one was for 51 yards, and there's that hang time we were talking about. Dribbles into the end zone, but boy, that kid Andy Lee can really get under a punt. 21 kicks now over 50 yards on the season. Coming up tonight, the NFL's double coverage continues at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. Donovan McNabb and the Eagles try to wrap up the NFC East title against the Redskins. Then tomorrow night, Jamal Lewis tries to break the NFL's single-season rushing record, Ravens and Steelers. It all starts each night with NFL primetime presented by Miller Lite. Both games also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator, direct TV, or the Dish Network today. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Now first and 10, Cavaliers get the ball back. Marcus Hagan gets the catch and runs for a first down. 14 yards for him. Now Marcus also serves as a backup quarterback, an explosive athlete. And again, the imagination of the offensive coaches of Virginia trying to get him the ball because he does have 
game breaking ability. Just a sophomore out of Hampton, Virginia. You saw Marcus on a reverse earlier. There was a quick flip screen yeah. to him. Get him. Getting in the ball as the third quarter comes to a close. Walt Harris and Pittsburgh trailing Matt Schaub in Virginia, 20-16. Where does reality end and pure vision begin? A Pioneer Plasma display can deliver more than one billion colors, taking high-definition television to a whole new level. Pure vision. Only from Pioneer. XM Satellite Radio. 100 digital channels you'll never want to be without. With music, news, sports, and talk, many commercial free, it's the perfect holiday gift. XM Satellite Radio. Is not ready? No. So how do we get it to Milan? Fourth quarter about to get underway here at the Continental Tire Bowl. Virginia leading Pittsburgh 20 to 16, even though Pittsburgh is just dominating in time of possession. Virginia has the football now, first and ten. First play of the fourth quarter. Cam Ward, Chris Spielman, and Mike Gleason joining in. Liz Hagan's again. Marcus Hagan, backup quarterback, also wide receiver. Picking up 12 yards on that catch. Speaking of, talking about the statistics, Chris, that's just staggering. The time of possession is unbelievably in favor of Pittsburgh. Yeah, I mean, West uh, Virginia has been able to have a field position. They also capitalized on a turnover. And I'm looking at the score, 20 to 16, and I'm reminded of the missed extra point by David Abdul of Pittsburgh, which made it a two-possession ball game, as opposed to a one-possession ball game being a field goal away. Down four instead of three. Yep. Abdul missing that extra point in the first half, and then the Yanks in favor of J.B. Gibney, who hit a field goal. As Pierman gets the carry, and Alvin Pierman is tackled down in Pittsburgh territory. Picks up seven more as we revisit the missed extra point. Let's take a look at it. It was a good hole. He just kind of pushed it off to the right. And he's blocked by the upright. And it's, there, there you have a four-point game as opposed to a three-point game. More importantly, a two-possession ball game. Second and three now for the Cavaliers. They have a couple of field goals from Connor Hughes, says Virginia. Pierman again. A oh, big, big hole on the left side of the line. And Pierman is finally pushed out of bounds. We're going to mark him upfield at the 26. But that's good enough for another Cavalier first down. 21 yards for number 21. Well, first of all, it's a great call. Nobody's outside here. And what they're going to do is they're going to pull this guy and this guy in a counter OT. OT means guard and tackle. Here they come, the two big fellows around. They got a hat on a hat. And right here, Alvin Pierman gave him a leg and took it away with a shim shake. And he's off with the burst. And so he's tackled after a big game. See if he twists his ankle there. Oh, oh, man, he got a little twist there. With that carry, he's gone over the 100-yard mark. Seven carries, 104 yards. Shot in the end zone. And he throws that too far. Again, looking for true freshman Dayon Williams as Pierman is checked out on the sidelines, but he just turned that thing as he was running out of bounds. You know, they came back with the same type of look. They pulled the backside guard and the backside tackle, but they bootlegged away. Now, usually when you run a bootleg, you only pull one of the guys because you don't want to sacrifice pass protection. That's why the ball was forced early. Here's the look. Oh, there's that ankle. That's man. Yeah. Remember, Pierman also earlier this game had a 51-yard run that set up Virginia's second touchdown, so he's got a 51-yard run and 21-yard run over 100 yards, and sitting on the sidelines, there's Lundy, picking up five yards for the Cavaliers. Well, you're following Lundy's there, following big, 
Elton Brown, who was voted by defensive coordinators in the ACC, as the best blocker in the ACC. Funny, though, the media did not even put him on the all-ACC team. <laughs> And, and that's a good job by Lewis Moore of defeating Elton Brown, but it was five yards after the fact. But that's, that's strange how that works. And the guy's voted by coaches as the best offensive lineman. He's not even on the all-conference team. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit weird. Third and five, the red line showing the line of scrimmage. And that is complete to the tight end, Heath Miller. Miller tackled down around the 10-yard line. First down, Cavaliers, his fourth catch of the day. Uh, it's a good job. Uh, they're in a bunch formation. And we'll look at it on the freeze here so I can show you what the bunch formation is. Here's the bunch. See, this is called a bunch formation. It's designed to do is cause confusion between these three guys who have these three guys. And on the snap of the ball, you're going to see Heath Miller kind of sneak out. And he's going to sneak right back in there on a little option route. And Shabby's just waiting for him to get open. He delivers the ball. But it creates confusion in pick scenarios. Wendy gets it. And Wally is dragged down around the four-yard line by J.J. Horn and speaking with uh, Matt Schaub yesterday he talked about the, the connection he and Heath Miller had. They worked extra hard and did a lot of one-on-one -on -one work during the summer and he, it, he, it's to the point now where they can anticipate each other's moves and yep. it shows on the field. Well, that when you do get that extra work in the summer, obviously you become connected and you know each other's moves. Got a Virginia player down. It's big Elton Brown. Again, they say, well, let's see if you got that fixed to counter OT, and you're going to see Big Elton and how he got hurt on the break. Here's Elton pulling. So as they check out Elton Brown, we will be back with more from the Continental Tire Bowl. At least for now. Meanwhile, Alvin Fearman continues to have that left ankle looked at. Remember, the Charlotte native missed this game last year because of a hurt knee. Had a spectacular game, over 100 yards rushing, but uh, hurt his, twisted his ankle on his last carry. Second and goal now for Virginia. They have the four-point lead. Second and goal from the four. Keith Miller in the end zone, and he tries to out-jump the defender. And it's an interception. Wow. Looks like a jump ball. No, no. Yeah, and, 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 and Heath Miller's coming away with the football. Now, my interpretation of the rule, my understanding, J.J. Horn does a great job of fighting it out. But my interpretation of the rule, both guys have the ball the tie goes to the offense, but the official clearly sees it, sees it as, as Tutu Ferguson with the catch. It looks like he's got the ball, and Heath is trying to get it. This is a great job of Tutu fighting off the bigger man, going up and getting it, then ripping it away. But that's a great job of Heath Miller holding on to the football. It's great football everywhere. But again, going to the highest point and getting his hands inside. Let's see what happens right here. See, he's flicking around. Yeah, right there, he has the ball. That's a great call by the officials because he has the ball right there, and Heath Miller does not have the ball. Great call by the officials. Huge play for the Pitt Panthers defense. Third interception of the season for Tutu, and he now leads his team. There were three guys who had two interceptions uh, during the season, as my Reek has it. And you mentioned how he's listed as 5'10", 190, and his name is William Ferguson, nicknamed Tutu after Desmond Tutu. Ah. Archbishop from South Africa because he's a small, full of fire, and uh, he showed it. That was a heck of a play. That was a heck of a play. You're right, because he's going up against a much bigger man at 6'5", and he goes and out jumps. Now, now Shabby threw under through that a little bit. He's got to throw well, only his guy to do that. on the back shoulder. He threw it to the front shoulder, and Tutu made a great play. Myrie fighting his way close to another first down for Pittsburgh. So again, Pittsburgh dominating as far as the time of possession is concerned in this game. Well over, has, has had the ball well over twice as long, as, about twice as long, we should say, as, uh, as Virginia. And Larry Fitzgerald, very quiet today. This is an active streak. He has gone 18 straight games in which he's caught at least one touchdown. That's an NCAA record, but that's in jeopardy right now. Well, and again, it's a credit to what Virginia's been able to do. Sacrifice a little bit of their run defense by taking linebackers and getting bumped on it. There he is, five catches for 77 yards and no touchdown. Rutherford trying to go on top. Parham in his face again. Good job of coming back to the football. Prince L. Brockenbrook. Going to be marked just short of the first down. Tony Franklin on the stop. 
Uh, and Prince of Brockenbro does a great job, as you pointed out, Pam, of coming back to the football. Keep your eye on him up top here. Now, Rutherford will get in trouble again, but he's so strong that he avoids the pass rush. But watch Prince of come back. He sees his quarterback in trouble. He's going to end up right here when he catches the football. He's going to come back and he sees his quarterback in trouble. Watch him work back to the quarterback. Great job of finding the open area. Moves. Saka Polite gets the carry. That's the, uh, the Pittsburgh fans yelling out Lou as he gets his football, picks up four yards. So I, I'm impressed with Rod Rutherford right there. I, I think he's got a chance to be an NFL quarterback because of his size. He's got great arm strength, but one thing that's hampered him the last few games is not hampered him in the bowl game, and that's his accuracy. He's been on target with all his throws today, except maybe one or two. Outstanding at 16 of 23. Does have the one interception today, but well, 237 yards is about the foot. Now he holds on to the football. And he is tackled down just short of the 50-yard line by Ahmad Brooks as we go down to Mike Lee and Mike. Well, Pam, earlier in the broadcast, you mentioned the fact that Alvin Pyramid uh, played his high school ball right here in Charlotte. He couldn't wait to play this game because he missed it last year. Well, he has been taken to the locker room. It's his left ankle, and he's doubtful as far as his return. It's doubtful he will be back on the field this afternoon. All right, Mike, and again, that was after a 21-yard run where Pyramid twisted the ankle, just twisted underneath him as he was running towards the sideline. So his day appears to be done. He has 104 yards on the ground on just seven carries, also 32 yards through the air. So a terrific day for Pierman, except for the ankle injury. Play action, and there's Muffin Curry all over Rod Rutherford. This is the second time that Rod Rutherford has had trouble picking up this blitz. It's a corner blitz. Wimborn is able to do it. There's Muffin Curry coming from the corner, vacating coverage and closing down. Now, Rutherford's got to be able to recognize the corner blitz when you have it. Watch him. Right here's Muffin. He's lined up on a receiver right here. He doesn't even acknowledge him. The safety comes over and takes the receiver. Muffin Curry comes a long way. Closing speed is 5'8". Says, you know what? You're right. That's a big man trying to get down. Penalty called at the end of the play, and... Al Grove furious about that. That's the fourth sack of Rutherford today. First for Muffin Curry. Well, and it's a big one. And that's the third big one. And big ones are defined by 15 yards. That third personal foul, Chris, against the Cavaliers today. Five-line warning to the Virginia staff. First warning. Yeah, I think what happened was they did a little celebration there. Wimborne did like a, a snapshot. Took like a fake picture of Curry. Enough, I, I've seen enough of that between cell phones and, and fake cameras and fake cell phones. I can't take it anymore. I see any more of them do a nosedive out of his boot. Please stop. Play football. Watch it. Look, here, 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 here. Okay, that's, that's fine. All right, yeah, great. You made a good play. Thank you. But then his boy came up and took a snapshot of him. Through the flag on that, 15 yards. Play action over the middle, and it is complete to Chris Wilson. The tight end, his second catch of the day, first down. Chris Wilson in the middle of the field, man. Football 101. You're going to play two deep coverage. You're going to bring a safety blitz. You're going to vacate the middle of the field because your linebacker sits short. Just give him the football. Nice job of adjusting turning his hip and coming back for the football. Looks like Chris Wilson is a pro prospect right there. Not only has he shown his catch ball, but he's been doing a great job of blocking. Good side, too, for a 6'3", 250, his second catch, 54 yards. And maybe that will help loosen things up for Larry Fitzgerald as we get close to the goal line. He does not have a touchdown catch today. He's put wide to the right. Rutherford looking towards him, has to look off after good coverage and a nice catch. Underneath, Raymond Mann on the coverage. He was a good catch. He comes back for the football again. Rutherford looking at Fitzgerald. Does not see him. Then he's going to come back to Lee. He sits down there. Again, a good job of catching him with his hands. And here's Fitzgerald working one-on-one -on -one against Buffett Curry. And he's open on the outside. The pressure got to him, so he came back to his second option delivered the strike to Lee. And he looked off of him early. That's Greg Lee's first catch. He's a true freshman from Tampa Bay, and the Pittsburgh Post has told us yesterday they really, really like him. 
Brandon Myrie, Chris Chaney meets him and takes him down. Virginia there, one of the few things they they have not done is get penetration. That time Chris Kenny got penetration, and I wish these guys would please stop with the individual celebration. You're not going to be put on a video game yet. You don't need to have an individual celebration. Please stop. Sick of it. Making tackles. That's what you're supposed to the do, right, Chris? The is the game. He could have made that play if those 10 other guys didn't do their job. It's a joke. Especially after getting whistled or flagged for a personal foul earlier in this possession for excessive celebration. Third and six, the Virginia crowd screaming. More corner blitz coming, and that pass is incomplete. Looking for Musaka Polite, but Ahmad Brooks is right there on the coverage. That's a good break up on the ball, and his true freshman, who I like more and more, is Ahmad Brooks. Not only knowing the football, but avoiding the interference. They try to do a little F angle or a fullback check down. Watch the play. He's going to come out here, and he's going to come right back there. See, that's called the F angle. And he comes right back there, but Ahmad Brooks comes in and times it perfectly. The ball and a hit at the same time. Brooks, a true freshman, as you mentioned, Chris, the leading tackler on this team, was the starter early since training camp. He was a prized uh, recruit that Al Groh got, and he's played well. J.B. Gibbony in for his second field goal attempt. He made a 28-yarder earlier, and Gibbony misses that one. That was a 36-yard attempt. Give it in because David Abdul's been struggling, and that didn't work out either. So Virginia clinging to this four-point lead. Well, welcome back to the Continental Tire Bowl. Virginia holding on to this 20-16 lead as J.B. Gibbeting has just missed a 36-yard field goal, kicking game continuing to be a headache, a headache for Pittsburgh. So Virginia takes over from the 20, less than eight minutes left to go in this one. Shaw completes it to Marcus Hagan, his third catch, and a couple of late flags coming in again. After a good clean start, this game's starting to break down a little bit here in the second half. Yeah, I think they might have got face masks, yeah. Let's see if that's a five-yarder or 15-yarder. Man. On the defense, five yard that is the first, first, first penalty against Pittsburgh. See right here. No face mask yet. No face mask yet. Kushuna. Kushuna. Excuse me. Coming in. Kushuna, yes. The senior from Schuylkill. Haven, Pennsylvania, and that you see it, the first penalty against Pittsburgh, three of those five penalties against Virginia were personal foul penalties. What a first and one. Malie Lundy easily picks up the new first down on that carry. Let's go back to the uh, missed kicks for Pittsburgh. Very key plays for us. David Abdul misses an extra point. So he gets down, J.B. Gibney and made a field goal and then misses this one from 36 from Walt Harris. Oi. Yeah, it's frustrating. I wonder if he's thinking about now who you're going to go with if they're in the field goal position again when you go with Abdul or Gibney. And look, Abdul is warming up on the uh, on the sideline. He is the young man who missed the point after. After hitting only eight of his 16 field goals during the regular season. Lundy gets the ball again. Trying to get outside. Keeps the clock running as he goes down just in front of the 44-yard line. Picks up eight. You see two Ferguson there to help him down. Yeah, Ferguson could have got him down a little bit earlier. But again, being a good tackle and a good defender, it's all about understanding angles. And Wally Lee was able to outrun him to the corner. He's got to come up and attack. Instead of sitting on Wally Lee waiting to make a move, don't break down as a defender. Come up and attack and take the shot. And Lundy, great player, and again, he is only a sophomore at this Virginia team. They lose Schaub, obviously a huge hit for them next year, but then they play 24 freshmen and sophomores on their uh, QD roster, so what a future ahead for them. Second and two. Lundy again. Virginia playing a little ball control, lead up the clock at another first down. He's into Pittsburgh territory. Ferguson with another tackle. Let me tell you, if I'm playing Pittsburgh, I'm going to keep my eyes on, on big Elton Brown. 
because he seems to be going where the ball's going. And at 6'6", 335 pounds, a big fella can move. He's going to pull right around here. And if I'm a linebacker, I'm going to follow 61 and the fullback. They're going to take me right to the play. And what happened is they're getting, HP did a good job of filling, bouncing the ball up, but they're getting the late fill by their safety and their corners. They're not getting contact on the ball here until he's four or five yards down the field. Brown, who had left early in the game, obviously okay after hurting his left arm. Lundy tap dancing around and might have lost a yard on that play, but the clock keeps running as we head towards the five minute mark. And, and, and Virginia has confidence. And that clock is running, and an ally to a running clock is running the football. Now, they got lost a yard there, but they've been successful keeping the ball on the ground. And if you are just joining us, Larry Fitzgerald has five catches for 77 yards for Pittsburgh, but has no touchdowns. So his NCAA record streak of 18 straight games in which he's caught a touchdown pass is in severe jeopardy. And you have to give a lot of credit, again, to Al Groh and his uh, defensive staff. They've done a terrific job neutralizing him. Shot to Lundy underneath. Cuts it back inside, so he stays in bounds. Picks up about four, and the clock keeps rolling. Lewis Moore, the middle linebacker, making the stop. And a big Claude Harriot down on the ground. I believe for Pittsburgh. No, that's too soon. Uh, for Funa. They did a good job of reading the screen. They faked it to Marcus Hagan on the swing pad to come back with Lundy on the screen. Well, Vince is a very impressive young man. Is Petunis, as he gets attended to. First team Verizon Academic All-American the last two years, already in grad school, and was honored at a banquet yesterday for his academic achievements. He's going to get popped Ooh. right there by Big Elton Brown, who delivered about 333 on him. And, and, and that's, you know, that's a big man. Now, Cortunas, Cortunas is a big man, but here comes Big Elton with the, the forearm. And that's football. That's a nice shot, and, and Vince didn't see him coming, so he didn't have a really good chance to defend himself. But that's a good job of Elton Brown coming back and, and showing some nastiness. I was talking to Andy Eck, the former Chicago Bear offensive lineman. I said, does he have any nastiness in him? And he just gave me the, the wicked <laughs> offensive line smile. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Andy would know. He's a great offensive lineman. Job. Plenty of time. He's got Ottawa Anderson breaking free at the 30, and he finds it. Anderson, first down at, out at the 27, as he broke free from Shante Spencer. Well, that's tough duty on Shante to cover that long when you give the quarterback that much time to throw, and it's accurate. You see, right here, Shante's got initial good coverage on, on Ottawa. But Ottawa is smart because he sees his quarterback break the pocket, so he's going to break to where his quarterback's running, goes to the open area, and Schaub showing his ability, not only being a drop pass passer, but being able to throw on the run. Two catches for Ottawa, both of them for first down. Again, about three quarters of all of his catches this year have been good for first down. If I'm good, I start committing 10 guys to the run here. Lundy running it, and running right through. Nice gain on first down for Wally. Yeah, and, and, and follow Big Elton. Good game plan. Yeah, uh, well, that's what they're yeah. doing. And Pittsburgh says, well, Big L's cool, but I better get running on my horse to get over there. And he's sitting back in his stance a little bit, so he's telling me he's pulling. You have to get over there. Again, voted by the defensive coordinators, and I see why in the ACC as the offensive lineman of the year. Yet, us in the media, being as smart as we are, won't even vote him on the all-ACC team. How's that work? Hey, second team all-ACC. No. Come on. He's a horse, too, and only a junior. Lundy trying to get some more, but he is tackled down for no gain. The Virginia team, which averages about 125 yards a game on the ground today, has 167. And this Pittsburgh defense has given up quite a few yards on the ground throughout the season. Well, it's a big third down right here because if they hold them to a field goal, they make the field goal. It's still a one-possession game for a touchdown. Obviously, for Pittsburgh, so they need to hold them to a field goal right here to give them enough time on the clock to operate their two minutes left. So it is indeed crucial for Pittsburgh if they want to try to get back in this. 34 shot. Can he deliver? No, he's Miller. 
left is usually shorthanded tight end zipped in there and he couldn't bring it in. Well, the ball's thrown before Heath Miller's out of his break. And Heath Miller doesn't make that drop. But that ball was on top of him fast. And Heath was a little slow getting both hands up. Right there, see there? Now, there's good timing. He's, he's throwing a fastball. And Heath, a little overthrown, but a guy like Keith Miller's got to make that catch. That's a makeable catch. Threw him the fastball. Maybe he was expecting a changeup. Yep. Connor Hughes coming in. He's already hit from 31 and 44. This is a 39-yarder to give Virginia the touchdown lead. And Connor Hughes, this kid is all but automatic. Now 23 of 25 on the season. Connor Hughes, three for three on the day. It's now a seven-point lead. Pittsburgh has 2.28 to tie it. North America, they're not just tires, they're continental tires. Capital One, what's in your wallet? And Samuel Adams, when you're ready for a distinctive brew, Samuel Adams, always a good decision. Over 51,000 fans here at the second annual Continental Tire Bowl. Most of them are Virginia fans making the trip down. I hear it's about a five-yard drive from the campus in Charlottesville down to Charlotte, North Carolina. Seven-point lead now for Virginia. Time running out on Pittsburgh. And a good run back. William Tutu Ferguson. That's exactly what the doctor ordered as they're going to take over from the 48-yard line thanks to the 48-yard kick return. That's a great run back. Why? Because Tutu got leveled before on a kickoff return. But he's a gutsy player, evidence of that interception that he made in the end zone covering Heath Miller. And here he just hits the seam. And, and, and there's no shake and bake here. It's just running straight and full speed, looking for the open and does a good job of protecting the football. Well, this is Fitzgerald time now. This is where he's got to shine. Second in the highs, and he's got to be the guy to shine and find a way to get open. He has yet to catch a touchdown pass today. Does have five catches for 77 yards. First and 10. Panthers. Rutherford looking downfield, and again, it's that Virginia rush. The ball is loose, and the Cavaliers have it. Brennan Smith causing havoc again. And yeah, Brennan Smith's been solid all day. He's made some big plays. And what they did was they took Brooks, and they moved Brooks to the outside. Brennan Smith's coming on the stunt, and he just keeps working and working. And watch him with that left arm get that ball out of there. See, he popped his elbow, forcing Rutherford to drop the ball. Here comes Brennan Schmidt coming off the stunt. Keep working, keep working, keep working. Gets the left arm on the elbow, knocks it out. Pursuit, turnover, Virginia. So Brennan Schmidt coming up with that sack, and Al Groh's defense, again, you can't... It's Brennan's fourth sack, by the way, on the uh, season. And Al Groh said he loves his kid's ten tenacity and aggressiveness. And that defensive game plan, I think, has worked quite well They've made Spielman. some adjustments, yep. adjustments at halftime, too, now. They've been able to slow down Pittsburgh running the football. They're winning a turnover battle. And when Virginia wins a turnover battle, they're huge. They win their game. Virginia on the season, plus four in turnovers. But as Chris mentioned, as uh, Lundy gets the ball, when they don't turn the ball over, I guess it's... it's which is usually the rule in most cases, and big disparity when they win games versus when they lose them. And Larry Fitzgerald might be in his final collegiate game. His team is down a touchdown. One of five Virginia sacks on the day, and this defense, again, statistically, if you look at it, Pittsburgh has had the ball for about 16 more minutes. Virginia has passed them at least in total yards, but. UVA, when they needed the big sack, Chris, and needed the, the big play, they came up with it on defense. Yeah, it's been 11 guys, too. Just one, 11 guys have played well. And breaking free, Wally Lundy trying to cement this game as he picks up the first down. Yeah, but Pam, remember when Alvin Pierman busted one for about 51? It's the same play. They watch the running back take two steps inside, set down, short step by the offensive lineman. And they don't get him as a flag football until 12 yards down the field where Lewis Moore hangs on for the tackle. Too easy. Elton Brown and the rest of this big Virginia offensive line wearing down Pittsburgh here in the second half. 
the struggles of the rushing defense of Pittsburgh certainly carried over to this game. Mundy again. Petunis coming up to make the stop. But Virginia forcing Pittsburgh to start to burn its timeout. And they take one here. They have one left. Capital One players of the game today. We couldn't come up with one guy, Chris. We've got to go with the defense in blue. Well, it, the numbers are, first of all, the goal line stand and palm was big. Brooks was big. But also five sacks. Larry Fitzgerald's streak apparently is going to come to an end of uh, touchdowns at 18, touchdown catches at 18. Just an outstanding team defensive effort. An outstanding game plan by Al Groh. And really, uh, an overall good game by, by Virginia. And the weakness or the Achilles heel has been turnovers. Virginia had two turnovers. You see, the last four games, only had three sacks today. He moved some players around. He put some of his athlete on the, athletes on the edges, and they were able to get pressure on Rutherford. Just a great job, great execution by Virginia. And the whole defense deserves the player of the game, in my opinion, because they work together as a unit. And that's why we have, re we have given our Capital One players of the game to the Virginia defense. Five sacks, an interception, a fumble recovery. And as Chris said, they have held Larry Fitzgerald in check. His 18-game touchdown catch streak, an NCAA record in serious jeopardy, is five catches for 77 yards and hasn't come close to the end zone. And Larry Fitzgerald, we have to ponder his future. Lundy holds on to it. We talked to him about the NFL draft, Chris, yesterday. He said he didn't want to discuss it. He doesn't really know what's going on. He wants to focus on this game. But the big question is, will his father petition to get him into the NFL? Because he went three and a half years of high school in Minneapolis, another year and a half at a prep school in Pennsylvania. And they want to petition and say that the uh, clock should get started ticking when his high school class right. graduated in Minnesota. That has been three years, and that's the rule. You have to be there after three football seasons yeah. have to pass. Well, but I don't know if the NFL honors prep school, if they treat that almost as a gray shirt as opposed to a red shirt. That's the big question. That's what has to be eventually discussed and figured out. As the first down is picked up by Virginia. Let's take a look now at the rule verbatim. This is the National Football League rule. College football players seeking special eligibility at least three football seasons must have elapsed since the player graduated from high school. Now, he did not technically graduate from high school until two years ago because he's a true sophomore, but again, they, they want to put that, they want to see if they could get it changed or at least ruled that yeah. he had an extra year of high school and therefore the clock should have started ticking a year earlier. Well, they, I don't know when he graduated. Did he graduate from prep school? Did he graduate from high school then go to prep school? That's the question. That's what's out there. And that's what they are going to look at as Lundy is tackled down just short of the goal line. And there's no doubt, Chris, in your mind, and we've talked to a lot of guys, everybody I've talked to says this kid could be a very high draft pick if he play in the NFL right away. Yep, the only weakness that I see and that I've been told about is his ability to get off the jam. And he's playing a little bit high, but I think coaches will look at that. They look at his raw talent, and we'll coach him to get off of jams. But as far as pure natural ability, I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a guy that comes around once every 25 years. I mean, he goes and catches everything. He's a team player. He's got great character. He's got all the intangibles. He's a top five pick because he's a great player. As Pittsburgh has burned its last time out, ABC is the home for the Bowl Championship Series game. USC, third in the BCS standings, number one in the polls, taking on Michigan at 4.30 Eastern on New Year's Day in the Rose Bowl, presented by City. Check it out, 4.30 Eastern time. Boy, Mike Williams, another heck of a receiver yeah. for USC. They're all over the place. Man. And you've got the other Williams there down at uh, Texas. Another Roy Williams. Yeah. Larry Fitzgerald. I want to take this time to thank Greg Peterson today, who stepped in nicely as our spotter, and our emergency spotter worked for the Panthers. Thanks, Greg. Good be, job, man. Yeah, he's ready. We had, to go, we had to go to the bullpen. He's, he's been an emergency he spotter, yeah. yeah. He's prepared. He was uh, like Eric Gagne for us today. Came in from the pen and did a good job, so we thanked him for that. I bet you had the day off, didn't you, Greg? <laughs> Virginia now a minute eight away from winning its second straight Continental Tire Bowl. Well, you can follow big Elton Brown. 
They're probably thinking of the ball. We didn't get around. Wendy going backwards. Now, Big Elton tried to get around, but the center got driven back into Big Elton, and Big Elton couldn't turn the corner at 333. When he turns the corner at 333, it's, it's a nasty collision. But that time, penetration tab level won by the Pittsburgh defensive line, but that's the only play they've been running. And they, they pull the big fella around, and Lundy hides behind him, sneaks it up in the hole, and breaks tackles and goes for yards. So now third and goal, Pittsburgh out of timeout. And Virginia will go to eight and five on the season. They have the UVA flag ready to come. The Gatorade's ready. Muffin has it. Muffin Curry number 22. Yep. They wanted to. They can run a little bootleg here. Al's going to take a knee. Go and see if he, they're going to do that. Now you better go off and hit him. Because <laughs> he's waiting. Now, if you're going to wait him, then you better go off and hit him. Up they got Al there. With 11 seconds left to go, they're going to douse him again. Yeah, he just submitted. <laughs> he just submitted. All right, go ahead and get me. Get it over with. Great job by Virginia. Great job by Pitt. That's why I love college football. If you limit that stupid celebration thing of fake pictures and cell phones, it would be beautiful. It would be perfect. What a great game. I love Capital One Bowl Week. <laughs> it was a good one. Al Grove, great defensive game scheme for him. Larry Fitzgerald, NCAA record streak of catching a touchdown in 18, 18 straight games is over. Matt Schaub, a terrific way to close out a spectacular career at the University of Virginia. Mike Leeson standing by right now with Al Grove. Al, congratulations. Thank of you. course, the marquee will read you. Kept Fitzgerald out of the end zone. But overall, your defense, uh, the goal line stand early, the late sack in the first half, the interception, the fumble recovery, fantastic job on the defensive side of the well, ball. Well, we want to become a proud defensive team, and we have some great young defensive players. And this was a gallant game by two teams that really wanted to win, but we had some kids come up with some plays there. Uh, we always tell our players, fourth quarter running game and fourth quarter, quarter pass rush, and we needed both today. How important was it for you that Pierman, who did not play in the game, he grew up right here in Charlotte, he had a big game before the injury. Uh, it's a wonderful thing for him. Uh, you know, both he and, and uh, Chris Canty missed it last year, and to come back here and win like this, it's heartwarming. All right, Sam, congratu uh, congratulations, Coach. Uh, you said the expectations might have been too high after last year's, but this is definitely a good step. Happy New Year. God bless America. Thanks, Coach. Pam, back upstairs. All righty, Virginia graduate Al Groh winning this game 23-16 to with his club. They were 5-5 five and five back in November, closed the season winning three in a row, shutting down Larry Fitzgerald. They take it 23-16. to 16. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. For a whole crew, including Mike Leeson and Chris Gilman on Pam Ward. The seasonal colors, red and green, are for the Huskers and Spartans. For Michigan State, 2003, a season with a new coach, a new offense, and renewed hope.